Hello, a very good morning. Welcome along to Ireland M. It is fantastic to have you for what is a budget bonanza today. It's a it? rollover. Two days in a row sure we're going is. for it. It's Wednesday the 11th of October and here is what is coming up this morning. At 20 past nine we are going to be discussing budget 2024 with the Tanishta, Michal Martin, as well of course as the government's response to recent events in Israel and Gaza. Absolutely. Minister for Education Norma Foley will be discussing how students and teachers alike will be affected by yesterday's budget announcement. She'll be on the couch in the eight o'clock hour. Um, and of course we're going to be looking at how renters and home owners fared in the government's mm. financial plan. That's coming up at 7.35. Alan is right over there. What else is coming up, my friend? Well, Miriam, we'd like to hear from you this morning and about the budget. Please send in your questions and comments if you want to ask the, the Tarnished or Norma Foley anything. 0896 one Plus, the news we heard yesterday that Holly Willoughby has resigned her position from this morning. We're going to be chatting about that at 7.45. Now, Derek, as always, is out and about this morning. Where are you this morning? Derek and at this is the warm well, weather coming um, to an end uh... No, it is coming to an end, Al. Uh, ahead of our trip to Roscommon tomorrow, uh, we're live down on the Royal Canal this morning, and it's certainly a damp and drizzly start out there this Wednesday. Uh, some heavy rain at the moment through parts of the south and across the southeast, with some lightning strikes. The best of the brightness, the best of the sunshine through northern and northwestern areas out there today, and fresher and cooler out there as well, with a good dip back in those temperatures. Uh, guys, we'll have more details on that right across the morning. I cannot get over how dark it is out there this morning. Happy post-budget day blues. Yeah, you're <laughs> Sorry not, about the rain. You're not wrong, not wrong, because <laughs> yesterday was so nice as well. Thank you very much, yeah. Derek. We'll catch up with you later on. Go get yourself back indoors. It is time now to get the news over with Anne O'Donnell. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Well, motorists will be facing a rise in prices for petrol and diesel at the pumps today of up to three cents a litre. That's after a carbon tax increase was announced in the budget yesterday. Well, it comes as groups have also been reacting to a number of the measures announced in budget 2024. A little for a lot of people, Budget 2024 delivered solid benefits for most sectors of society, mortgage interest relief, a cut to the USE and energy credits to help with winter bills, all welcomed. But the problems with housing and homelessness are still hitting home. And there's nothing in the budget today that's really going to see us turn the corner or turn the tide on the number of people entering homelessness. There is you know, a welcome increase in the, the funding for homeless services on the front line, but that's also a recognition that the numbers are going to continue to go up. The extension of hot school meals and free school books are set to make a difference to families, but while one-off payments are beneficial, commentators say they don't give ongoing stability for those struggling. They do help families um, in the short term, but really they're not going to the core problem that we have, and that is um, too many families that are uh, living in poverty or living at, in, at risk of poverty. Mental health reform has seen a surge in demand for services. It's worried that the amount of extra funding for the sector was not outlined in the budget. We've been calling for an investment of an additional investment of 115 million euro and as we await more details I, I suppose we're concerned that we may not get the amount that, that is needed. The government has said there's something for everyone in budget 2024 but critics are warning the interventions don't go far enough for the poorest in society. Trish Laverty, Virgin Media News. More attacks have been reported in southern Israel and also on Gaza as the conflict between Israel and Hamas militants intensifies. Well, the Israeli Prime Minister has said that its siege of Gaza is only getting started. Meanwhile, the US President Joe Biden has been reacting and also pledging his support for Israel. We're surging additional military assistance, including ammunition and interceptors to replenish Iron Dome. We're going to make sure that Israel does not run out of these critical assets to defend its cities and its citizens. My administration has consulted closely with Congress throughout this crisis. And when Congress returns, we're going to ask them to take urgent action to fund the national security requirements of our critical partners. This is not about party or politics. This is about the security of our world. 
Elsewhere, Gardaí in County Cork are continuing to question a man this morning in connection with the murder of Tina Satchwell. She disappeared from her home in Yall in March of 2017, while a man in his 50s was arrested in East Cork for questioning yesterday. Well, the disappearance of Tina Satchwell in 2017 sparked a massive investigation and led detectives to many parts of the world seeking information as to her whereabouts. She was last seen in the company of her husband at a car boot sale and vanished the following day. Now, Richard Satchwell has always said that he believes his wife is alive and that she would return someday. Now, also, Gardaí conducted many, many searches, including almost 30 acres of woodland at Castle Martyr. Nothing of any evidential value was discovered. Divers also conducted a search of water close to the house where Tina once shared with her husband. In the last couple of weeks, Gardaí have been reviewing the case and it was upgraded to murder, despite the fact that Tina Satchwell's body has not been located. Yesterday afternoon at about five o'clock, a man in his 50s was arrested and taken here to Cove Garda station. Once his period of questioning expires, at that stage, detectives must either charge or release him. Flights at UK's Luton Airport near London are suspended until at least midday today. That's after a large fire broke out there at a, ter a terminal car park. The fire was reported to have broken out at a multi-storey car park at Terminal 2, with reports that some airport staff are saying it was a car which had spread the fire. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Thank you, Jared. A very good morning. We're live here along the Royal Canal this Wednesday morning. We're on to the 11th of October now. Let's take a look weather-wise and how it's shaping up with Avro Valero with us on cameras. And it's a damp and drizzly start here into eastern areas, but the bulk of the heavy rain out there this morning, there's a band, there's a strip of it right across the Munster Southern Enster at the moment. So through parts of Kerry into central Cork, South Tip, uh, Waterford, uh, tipping around that Wexford, uh, Carlow border as well. Some heavy uh, spills of rain with some lightning strikes, would you believe, early out there this morning now and there's light to locally moderate northerly winds. Now right across today, in fact, take a look at the map because the best of the sunshine really there across northern northwestern regions. Uh, it's getting a lot cloudier the further south we sink, but once again passing showers uh, to take us right across today. Top values, fresher and cooler than where we were yesterday as well at 13 to 17 degrees. And into tonight, it'll be uh, mainly dry and clear across the northern half of the island. In fact, pretty decent the further south. We think once again cloud cover with some passing showers as well. Feeding its way into your Thursday morning with overnight lows. A good dip back in them as well tonight with values there back to 4 to 8 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up here along the banks of the Royal Canal. Stamp and Drizzy at the moment. We're back again live at 7.35. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media 1. It's time now to take a look at this morning's paper, starting with the Irish Times. Its headline, Households gain from tax cuts, more spending and welfare boosts. The government yesterday unveiled a huge spend and save budget that boosted permanent spending and promised large cash giveaways in the coming months. The examiner leads with giveaways and tax breaks in 6.4 billion euro budget. Budget 2024 has targeted the squeezed middle with energy credits, investment in childcare and income tax reductions. However, opposition criticises the coalition for not making housing a top priority. The Irish Independent also leads unsurprisingly with that story. Its headline reads 14 billion bid to win working family votes. The coalition parties are banking on a giveaway budget to win back voters in next year's election. Action. The higgledy-piggledy tax cuts do add up, but they will be forgotten about in a day. That's the top story on the Daily Mail. The Mirror's front page is something different. Murder probe as Gardaí dig at missing Tina home. Gardaí last night arrested a man in his 50s and sealed off the home of Tina Satchwell amid suspicions her body may be buried there. Yes, the sun similarly leads with Tina murder cop quiz. Tina went missing from her home in Yall County Cork in March 2017. The star also leads with murder quiz as guards dig at Tina's home. And the Herald goes with Celeb asked if I was sweet 16. An Irish entertainer appeared in criminal court accused of engaging in sex acts with an underage girl. She told a jury that she thought it was over when she came clean about being 16. 
Now with the budget dominating the headlines this morning, we'll be analysing its effect after the break and we want to hear from you throughout the morning. We've got lots of uh, government ministers in and we want to know what you make of it. 0896 111 Yeah, please do get in touch if you do have questions for the likes of Norma Foley or Micheál Martin. Send them in to us and we will try to put, them to put it to them. We'll see you back here after this break. Welcome back. Now you'll have heard it a few times. Budget 2024 was designed to have something for everyone in the audience. But how will it impact your pocket? Yes, here to debrief, uh, we're joined by Jack Horgan Jones, political reporter with the Irish Times, Suzanne Connolly, CEO of Barnardo's, and journalist Jen Hogan. You are all very welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. Busy day yesterday, Jack. Um, one for everyone in the audience. And it kind of does seem to be that. That's the report of the headline of the news last night and this morning. Yeah, well, with 14 billion to go around, it's not surprising that there's one for everyone in the audience. Starting off with tax cuts, you know, changes to, to the USC bans, the standard rate of entry, uh, to the higher rate of paying tax, all the way through to the, the one-off measures. You know, everywhere you look, whether it's on the welfare side, with targeted uh, benefits for people in need, all the way through to the universal side, things like child benefit uh, being a, a double payment just before Christmas, and then special one-off schemes for mortgage holders, a multi-year scheme for landlords, uh, increased spending on infrastructure, increased spending a little bit on health, uh, and increased spending mm. uh, on things like housing. The question, I suppose, is that once you kind of step back from being dazzled by those figures, and they are kind of dazzling, there's a huge array of spending, a huge array of new measures, Will it make the difference in the long term? Will it merely insulate people or will people come out the other side of this budget feeling that they didn't have enough done for them? And we're at that point in the budget cycle, just in the aftermath of budget like, day itself, it where it's all kind of in the, in the... But will it be, will, exactly, I think that may be where we end up. People will feel insulated to a degree, but as we come through the tail end of the winter, once all those electricity uh, credits are paid, for example, there will be a kind of perhaps lingering feeling of appreciation, but mm. will this be enough... something still mentioned this year mm. about last year. Yeah, but yeah. will this be enough to kind of fundamentally change people's perception of the government's interests, capabilities, outlook mm. when it comes to, I think, tackling more chronic problems around the two old reliables, things like health and housing? Um, because they were two things that... In all fairness, Jack, and we, I know we have to move on, mm -hmm. but they weren't big features mm. yesterday. When you don't hear health being the mm. main headline and mm. housing, and I know we've got housing for, for all and they're like, we're keeping up with this. That was something where you're left scratching your head going, well, there are, there are the issues mm. in Ireland. Why aren't they our flagships again in this budget? Well, look, I think particularly on health, I think that's more acute in health. If you look at the, the increased allocation, it's just under 1.2 billion when you split it between uh, core and non-core and capital and, and current spending yeah. and all the rest of it. So but, 800 million core spending increase you, for next year. If you look at what the doctors said afterwards, they are all saying that this is going to leave us in a worse off worse off position than uh, than this year, that, that the quality of services is going to decline and that people will feel that diminution and, and, and you know, the doctors will be under more pressure and so on and, and so on. Listen, I saw a survey saying that a lot of people said that they would prefer better services rather than one money off. in their one-off money into their pocket as well. Mm. Suzanne, you uh, were asking on, on, on behalf of Bernardo's about an increase in social welfare. Mm. Said that you you needed a minimum probably of twenty five euro. You only got twelve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're disappointed about that because we know from the families that we work with every day how much they rely on extra money to make ends meet, you know, worried about food, heat, clothes, shoes for their children. And we know that having that regular increase up to 25 euros would have made a big difference for them in terms of their planning for, for their family life. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I think we know as well that families will welcome the once-off payments. I mean, that does that does make a difference, okay. particularly, you know, before Christmas and then the, the cost of living extra after Christmas. That That is something that will make a big difference because January can be a very cold yeah, month yeah, yeah. In, in a lot of ways. So that's, so that's positive. The, the, the childcare, 25% that's going to come in, the, that'll make a difference. Obviously the free the reduction in charges in yes. childcare, 25% yes, exactly. coming in next September. And the, yeah. free school the free school books, I know we'll talk about later, oh, that's all fantastic. Mm -hmm. However, we back to the point about health, the waiting lists impact on everyone acro across Ireland and that is something our families, they're waiting for assessments for their children. So the, the fact that that may not be addressed is, is really difficult, you know. So the other thing I'd just like to say from Bernardo's point of view, we think the, the investment in family support is key. And we know that we can play a real 
important role in helping reduce CAN waiting lists. So we'd like the government to be investing okay. Okay. also in the community and voluntary sector when it comes to trying to address the chronic needs that are there in terms of children's health and and social and emotional well-being. And that's interesting. Massively needed. Yeah. It is, because yeah. the CAMS waiting list has increased exponentially since 2017, which is something that you are very much... Uh, it, it's something that would affect an awful lot of your service users. So from that point of view, can I just ask you, you said that, it's, that these once-off payments are going to help people incredibly in this country, but do burn adults want to see systematic change? Do you want to see investment in preventative measures more than these one-off? Or right now, with inflation, are you going, I'm sorry now, but we do need that 12 euros in someone's pocket? We need both. I know, but actually, yeah. Actually, we, we really would call on the government to think about addressing things in the medium and long term, particularly for children, because it, it makes such a difference. Okay. If you grow up in chronic poverty or if you're always worried as a child or indeed as a parent, that really affects your, your social emotional well-being and your sense of hope and possibility and its long-term negative impact. So one of the things we'd be saying is you, you ensure the daily essentials are met and then you think about what are the services that are needed to help children have a sense of hope and possibility the children stay in school if they've got mental health problems they're anxious and they're depressed they get the services that they need they've got adults that are surrounding them with a sense of nurture love care and attention they can they can dream big like all children in ireland like that's what you hope for all of them yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jen, families seem to be one of the big winners here with a number of things that were mentioned there. The reduction of third level fees, free books for junior cycle students, expansion of hot meals. You've been speaking on 25% reduction in childcare, mm. which was another one which we kind of wondered whether that was going to come through or not. You've been speaking to a lot of families. What have you heard? I have been speaking to families, particularly since the news broke. And actually echoing what Suzanne said there, for, for some families, it wasn't enough. It definitely doesn't go far enough. And there were some people saying that, you know, while they appreciated the one-off payments and they appreciate even that small increase because their situation is perhaps so desperate. There are mothers getting in touch saying they have 35 cent in their account to last until Thursday. So these one-off payments do actually matter in making a difference. When we go to go near education and look at some of the changes that have been made there, um, it was definitely a big welcome for the extension of the free book scheme to first to third year. But there are kind of questions, are, is it a little bit tokenistic? Because there's not really any books to buy in second and third year, maybe aside from optional subjects, there's not a huge amount there. And for fifth and sixth year, they were kind of left out of it this time. A really expensive But do you not time. have to do it incrementally? Because you're buying all your Perhaps. books, you're buying a pile of books in first year. Perhaps. that are meant to do with you for the three to do, years. To do for the three years, yeah. but you know what, if maybe if they'd looked at first and fifth year, they're, they're the big heavy years for parents. That might have made more of a difference because for the fifth and sixth year parents... We don't have to still, give them a chance though to actually make it happen. I think if you've you know? got somebody in fifth and sixth year and you're a parent who only has somebody maybe in the senior cycle, you're thinking, well, I missed out on the primary school books, I missed out on the junior cycle, I would like some relief too. It is really, it's so expensive sending children to school. And it even, seems like a simple win. They've got it, primary school last year, junior cycle this year, you would imagine. Do, do something for the senior cycle and even that introduction of um, or extending child benefit to include 18 year who are now in school, that's a huge thing. Parents are delighted about that because with, with children starting school later and because most uh, yeah. students now do TY, many of them turn 18 at the end of fifth year or during sixth year. However, that also isn't going to kick in until September 2024. So we have people, you know, who are kind of counting on that going, this is great yeah. news, but they also may miss out on it if their student is in sixth year. So there's very, for, for them, there's really big feelings of frustration. The €1,000 um, cut on the fees for third level, very welcomed by parents across the board. It came back to me, certainly, from families yeah. saying this was something they were really hoping for, were very glad to see. that is something. I know you're sitting there going, people, oh, well, I've missed out on that. I'm not getting the free childcare because they're gone out of yeah. crash. I'm not getting this. The fact is there is kind of something, there is an, uh, another step along the way where they're like, this, okay, if you've missed out on the 18s when they're in school, we're reducing fees in college. Will that be there for the following year? Yeah, it's That's a temporary, will it, it could be, be there for the following year? So for, for a cohort of parents, they feel they've missed out on so much already because they were maybe just that bit down the road. Okay. And the likewise with the childcare, wonderful, great to know that it's coming. But for parents who might be moving out of that childcare situation, for parents who don't have children, who can avail of that of those childcare cuts, and for parents who are struggling now, eleven months seems a long way away. So they're very welcome, but there's there's a but. Okay. There is a but. We'd love to hear uh, from you on that one. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. Yeah, and for, like Jack. I mean, it seems it's like a pre-election budget. Mm. But I think it was the front of the Daily Mail. Higgle dee piggle dee is you're seeing the cash there, but it will be forgotten tomorrow. Like. That was obviously on the back of their mind at the minute, but has not been enough, particularly as Moran said, that the two big cornerstones should have been health and housing? Look, 
at the polls last year, okay, we had an even bigger intervention and by and large mm. there was a little uptick here and there, but by and large the polling trends didn't didn't change. You had the mainstream parties kind of in and around the 18 to 22 percent mark. So I expect that the same will happen this year. They'll hold their ground. There will be a political positive for them in the absence of a negative. They won't go down in the polls. Yeah. But like, is that enough to match the potency of the kind of Sinn Féin alternative government mm. argument that like there are chronic undersupply issues in in health and housing and other areas and that those are the product of a series of conscious choices or a style of politics that emanate, emanates from the mainstream. I suspect not. I mean, it was an easy attack for uh, for um, Pierce Doherty, Doherty yesterday mm. to be, you know. But at the same time, they've done an op, they've done the banking levy. Sinn Féin mm. had talked about the banking levy. So they wanted 400 million, they've got 200 million. Mm -hmm. They wanted mortgage interest relief. That's Sinn Féin. Got a version of the Sinn Féin They've gotten a version of the Sinn Féin plan. The rent relief, they're getting an awful lot of things that Sinn Féin are saying. So you're kind of sitting there going, Fianna Fáil are in the Department of uh, Finance. Mm -hmm. Are they offering the hand out there to voters going, how are you? We're doing what they want to do. Hello, Sinn Féin. How are you doing? Does it feel like that's happening? Because there's a lot of policies in, that would there, work. Is, there's a lot of policies that are in that budget that would work. With is Sinn there Féin. a bit of kind of pre-coalition footy yeah. going on? I, I think per perhaps, yeah. I think we're so, we've some way to go down that road before you see Sinn Féin and Fianna Fáil in, in power together. But you're right. I mean, you do see begin to see the kind of connective threads that could exist between a coalition. But I still think there's 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 kind of too much distance, particularly I think under the under leadership of Michal Martin. Mm. But that's a conversation perhaps for another day. And do you think there's much. someone else in the Fianna Fáil party that would be able to? reach out to Sinn Féin I more? I think certainly the possibility of coalition with Sinn Féin is uh, one of the major questions and one of the major positions that the next leader of Fianna Fáil will have to sketch out. Or if Michal Martin is going to lead Fianna Fáil into the next general election, he has to he has to be credible and, 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 and have a position on that as well. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jack Horgan-Jones from the Irish Times, as always, great to have you with us. Suzanne Connolly from thank Bernardo's, you. thank you. And Jen Hogan, of course, That's journalist. Fine. Brilliant to have Cheers. you all with us. Thanks for that. Get in touch. 0896 111 Now time to get the news with Anna Dahl. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Well, time for a check on your news headlines now. And motorists will face a rise in prices for petrol and diesel today of up to three cents a litre after a carbon tax increase was announced in yesterday's budget. However, an increase in fuel excise due at the end of the month has been delayed. That's until next year in two separate instalments from today as well. Smokers will also be paying more for a packet of 20 cigarettes, which went up by 75 cents. A missing investigation in County Cork into the whereabouts of Tina Satchwell has been upgraded to murder. She disappeared from her home in Yall in March of 2017. A man in his 50s was arrested for questioning yesterday. More attacks have been reported in southern Israel and on the Gaza Strip as the conflict between Israel and Hamas militants intensifies. Well, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said its siege of Gaza is only getting started, but aid groups are warning of a humanitarian crisis as the result of the military offensive. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Yes, during life here along the Royal Canal this morning, it's a damp and drizzly start here at the moment and elsewhere. Uh, we have plenty of heavy rain now crisscrossing uh, parts of Munster through the southeast at ongoing risk of thunder and lightning at the moment uh, in the firing line really we're talking parts of Kerry to Cork, South Tip in around Wexford, Waterford and uh, through southern parts of Leinster as well so do be mindful of that. Now right across today light to locally moderate northerly winds down the driving seat elsewhere it is that mixture of bright spells and showers. The bulk of any rain once again concentrated into southern regions with the best of the sunshine to the north and in across the northwest into tonight. Long dry clear spells from most areas cloud cover uh, down south but once again and some passage showers to take us through into your Thursday morning with overnight lows fresher and cooler, a lot chillier too, back to three to seven degrees. So that's how we're shaping up for now. We're back again live at eight. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One.
Welcome back. Now, mortgage relief as well as tax credits for renters and for landlords were top of the agenda in yesterday's budget announcement. And you know what we're going to ask you? We want to hear from you on this one. 0896 here to discuss is house hunter Aidan MacDonald and Rory Hearn, lecturer in social policy at Maynooth University. Thank you both so much for joining Morning. us. We appreciate you here. God bless you, Alan. Alan <laughs> um, uh, in the background. Uh, can you tell us, Aidan, what is your situation and what did this budget do for you, if anything? So my current situation is a unique one. So I kind of split my time between Carlo and Galway. So I live at home with my parents for half the month and then the other half of the month I will travel up for work and socialise and rent off a friend who happens to have a spare room. Yeah. So that's the current situation that I'm in. And the reason I do it is it allows me to continue to save because the house prices are getting excessively excessive. So the only way I can try and compete with that is to keep saving. Um, I think the benefits of the budget so far is the cost of living stuff. Like, have you, know, you been looking for a house? Yes, yeah, for the last oh, year and a half I've been looking for a house. How is that? Because it is kind of a second job when you take it seriously. How's it been going? <laughs> yeah, like right now I've kind of given up because I look every day, I look and kind of the house, houses that are there, I could go for them, but then you're in a bidding war and then by the end of it, it's, it's you're, the quality you're getting is not, it's not worthwhile. You know? <laughs> so I, I would wind up settling for something and then I feel like I'm overpaying for it. Um, like right now, I was chatting to yourself the, in the green room, the, uh, the most affordable place in Galway that I could see is like, you're paying 220. And I know one of my friends bought for 135, maybe six years ago. And yeah, the quality, like I've, I've been in it and the quality is not great. You know, there's, you can see the mold, you can yeah. hear the, there's very uh, thin walls. So I just, it wouldn't be comfortable for me to settle and buy there. And to spend so much money yeah, on it when you realise that just what, five, six years ago, it was half that price. Yeah. In terms of renting then, so you rent off a friend the odd night, because is it just not possible to save if you're renting full time? Pretty much, yeah. It's the, like the, the rental property in Galway is it's very tough. You're looking at minimum five hundred euro for a single room. Right. And you know, at thirty five years old, I'm not looking for a single room. Like no. so, and it goes up and up. If you want an apartment for yourself, it's one thousand four hundred, one thousand six hundred, um, and that's like minimum. So if you're basically trying to save enough to put down a down payment, mm. like it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. So the banks are asking you for a certain lump sum to be able to put up against uh, this new mortgage, whatever else. Mm. You're able to show them that you can afford the mortgage because you're paying your rent. Yeah. But you can't afford to do it because the rents are just climbing higher and higher and higher. Exactly. Like, how frustrating is this for you? Somebody who, what age did you say you were? 35. 35. Yeah. Wanting to get your own house. You have a good job. You're able to afford it, but you're just in a, you're stuck in limbo almost. Yeah, like the the hoops I'm jumping through to try and have a good social life and keep saving is yeah, literally driving three yeah. hours from one side of the country just to make it work. Like yeah, so yeah, it's it's frustrating. Um, Incredibly frustrating. That was one thing that was brought up yesterday, Rory, in relation to this budget that it did something for almost everybody except those people without children who are in their thirties and early forties who want to buy a house. Yeah, and and you but know, would you're... you but would you agree? Because we do have just have to say that there is a tax credit, a renter's tax credit. They brought they brought one in. Yeah, the renter's tax yeah. credit, an additional two hundred and fifty euro. You compare that to how much rent has actually increased over the last year, the last two years, twenty percent. Talking about thousands of euro, renters have to pay extra. Um, I think if you t just take a step back and you go, you know, your generation, half a million young uh, adults stuck at home, you know, homelessness, four thousand children. And the government has eight billion of a surplus sitting there. And they go, no, we're not going to build additional homes. We're not going to put more money into it. We're going to put it away into this rainy day fund. I am baffled and angered by, you know, we have an unprecedented housing crisis. No increase beyond what was planned for last year. Like, why was none of that? Like, billions could have been put in to building more homes. And they decided, no, we're not doing it. But and, is there an issue? But is there an issue, Rory? And I completely listen. I'm trying to buy a house, and I've been trying to do it for a long time, and it is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> and then you, when you see that all this is happening, and the homeless crisis is an absolute disgrace. But we're sitting there with the Irish Fiscal Council uh, the, uh, Advisory Authority and the RSI going, stop spending money, stop giving mortgage interest relief. You are driving inflation up, and the value for money in buying homes for people to try to build a home right now, even if it's the government doing it on a large scale, there is no. Value 
value for money. There's but, no value but, for money. But this is the point because we actually, when you look at it, there's, there's a number of issues there. Firstly is that they said there's not capacity in the economy, so you can't put more money in because it, there's, you know, we're at unprecedented um, employment yeah. rates. But if we just came out um, when it researched there last week, that actually, for example, office building is going to dramatically fall in the coming months and coming years. That's going to release workers who can actually build homes. Oh, is this, yeah. uh, where are they going to go? You know, where are they going to be hired to build? And so the question is actually, how do you get value for money? And I have argued for years that we should have a public construction company that would actually be able to build affordably. It would know how much is going on. We are being fleeced. We know it by builders, developers, estate agents. You know, when you talk about homes and people not being able to buy homes, 58% of all new homes built in Dublin were bought by investor funds or local authorities or housing associations. You know, the housing that we're building is not even available for sale. So there's a real issue here around, you know, we know with the amount of vacant homes, derelict homes we have yeah. that could actually be bought up. But there's an argument there on the houses that are being built and the buy-to-let homes and the vulture funds that are coming in doing housing that we won't be able to build homes if these funds don't come in and pay for them. That was the argument, but we have 8 billion sitting there that we could put into, you know, local authorities' housing so to build the homes we need. I just don't get it. It's illogical. You would wonder, actually, do they really want to solve the crisis? It's, the thing is, and you have to say with the government, that they have spent an awful lot in the budget this year, the last two years, if they if they turned up with 100,000 houses, all of a sudden they would be re-elected next year. So it's obviously not as easy as that, Rory, for them. I, I, like, I, I don't agree with that, actually, because there are things they could have done, like homelessness, for example. They could have put in, uh, put in place a rent arrears fund. People are being made homeless because they can't cover the rent. Yet they wouldn't put that rent arrears fund in place. But, then, but that's not helping landlords. Well, this is the Landlord, point. But landlords will leave the system and then, of course, you're leaving it for funds to come in and take it over and then you can't control that. But you see, this is the point. They're, they're, they are confused in terms of who are they responding to. And they say they gave, you know, they gave the tax break for landlords. You know, a tax break for landlords, giving public money to, you know, but let's be honest here, privileged groups in Irish society. But they're trying to, bring, when, they're trying to stop but small if, accidental landlords but if from landlords, leaving. But if landlords want to leave, we have eight billion sitting there, buy the property off them, and you keep the tenant in place. But you're seeing the way a lot of the other public bodies have overspended. You look at the health system. Do you want to bring that into housing as well? Well, I, I, think, mean, this is... I think we do have to accept that it... if we're going to solve the housing crisis, we have to spend money on it and we have to invest in it. Aidan, when, would you be looking at, because for all this, like in all fairness, the fact is, is that you and thousands of other people like you are waiting to start their lives. Is, how it, is that how it feels sometimes, that you're just like, OK, um, where are the kids going to go to school? Where is this going to happen? When am I going yeah, to... Yeah, a little bit of limbo. Definitely a little bit of limbo. So from that budget yesterday, how are you feeling? There was rumours they were going to extend the help to buy scheme to, to second-hand homes. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That was the one that I was kind of hoping for. Well, uh, you were hoping for that? Yeah, because I just feel like... There'd be more on the market there. Yeah, and whenever anyone talks about the you know buying a new house, I always just feel they're, they're just that extra mo more expensive gone. just because that's included in Rory, the Rory, does that the work or does that drive up the cost of Well, houses? the issue is, you know, people feel, OK, help to buy, I get the extra money towards being able to buy. But actually, when you look at it, if you don't have a significant increase in, in supply, supply okay. you have more money going in, chasing a small amount of houses, it pushes up prices. And that's what the help to buy has been found um, in the UK. If you're watching this morning and you're like Aidan, you're just yeah. pulling your hair out trying to have a social, have a life. Now, it doesn't have to be an excellent social life and also trying to get on the housing market, let us know. Uh, Rory Hearn from Maynooth University, as always, great to have you with us. I Nate can't McDonald. wait until I see the day that Rory's going, that um, was great. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Uh, <laughs> like, that thank was good. you both guys for coming to Listen, get in so touch with us as well. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, Holly Willoughby next. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, stay with us. <laughs> Now, yesterday, Holly Willoughby announced via Instagram that she would not be returning to ITV's This Morning programme. Journalist Enda Brady is with us now. Who's got the latest? Good morning, Enda. Thank you so much for joining us. We've talked about This Morning with you more than anyone else. Every time he's on, he's like, what's going on this morning? <laughs> Come here. What do we know about um, Holly's decision to step down? Well, I think we know more than the ITV bosses knew yesterday, Murren, because they seem to have been completely taken by surprise, caught on the hop by this news. 
The word is that they only found out a few minutes before she posted all about this on her Instagram. So complete chaos at ITV this morning as they're trying to work out what to do now. And I think the big question is, does the show go on? Because they've gone from having one million viewers a day down to about 600,000 now. And Holly was the star attraction. But I mean, obviously, we've been listening to stories coming out about the attempted kidnap plot, mm -hmm. the attempt murder plot. So do you think this was a final decision where she said, do you know what, enough is enough? Yeah, I think she'd been under huge pressure off the back of Philip Schofield leaving and all of the lurid headlines that came from that. She was very much carrying the show by herself. I mean, she's a fantastic broadcaster. She's been on the show 14 years. She doesn't need to prove anything to anyone. And then out of the blue last week, the Metropolitan Police announced that they had made an arrest they were questioning this man from Harlow in Essex, a 36-year-old on suspicion of inciting kidnap and murder. And that was absolutely shocking. So out of the blue, she didn't present last Thursday's show. The, her bosses had been told about the alleged kidnap plot just a few hours beforehand. Uh, and basically, Alison Hammond stood in for her. And we now know that, you know, last week's work was Holly's last on this morning. So I think... She's going to go away, spend some time with her family. Obviously, what happened last week was horrible, yeah. horrible for anyone to deal with. And I think everyone who loves her and watches the show and enjoys her broadcasting career will just hope that she spends time with her family, recharges the batteries, and then gets back in touch with ITV when they want her for new projects. Yeah, yeah because she has gotten out of that golden handcuff seal. She can work with the BBC. She can work with almost anyone now, and she's got her own brand. But in relation to all this, I thought it was very interesting because, sorry, terrifying, first of all, oh, to terrifying. have something like that against you. Which she did point to, um, uh, to Richard and Judy, going, as they said, she said in her statement... You're minding the you're show. Just, I'm just minding this. We were just minding this. This is all about the viewers. So she did kind of point to the fact that this morning is bigger than the presenters. Did you think that rang true in her statement? I think it was a nice touch, you know, a bit of heritage of the show and a bit of nostalgia. And, you know, I grew up watching this morning when it was on or would be on in the house and Richard and Judy were like part of daytime TV yeah. uh, across the UK. So a nice little nod to the past. But I think she's a very, very switched on girl. And I know she will have been reeling from that kidnap plot from last week, but she has a fantastic family behind her. She's got three young children. And I think her focus really on is keeping herself and her family safe Thanks. and secure. Apparently, there's still help from the police uh, in terms of monitoring and, and security. ITV have backed her to the hilt. And I think ITV bosses today will be just hoping that, you know, she takes a complete break and then comes back to them because they will not want to lose Holly Willoughby, that's for sure. And speaking of that security, we were hearing that she was getting 24-hour protection. Is that still the case or are they stepping back now? <laughs> No, from what I understand, she does still have 24-hour protection and obviously the individual charged in relation to that uh, kidnap plot is in custody. But I think the protection will continue for as long as she wants it, really. Mm. But, you know, I think what she will do now is just get to Christmas, have a family Christmas and then come back stronger in 2024. But ITV, serious question marks now over whether the show goes on. Alison Hammond, I think, will come out with this in terms of being the, the stronger female presenter on the show. Josie Gibson has done very well recently. And then it's a question of who is the, the male kind of sidekick, be it Dermot O'Leary uh, or Ben Shepherd. Very interesting, because that's the thing. Is it too big to ben fail? Ben Shepherd, what about the Irish? Going? Craig Doyle has been Craig fantastic. Craig Doyle, what about the Irish? What about Enda Brady? What about yeah, yeah. Brady? No, they, they can't afford me, Mirren. They can't afford you. Yeah, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, Tommy Craig, Bozo Craig is done brilliant working in the UK. He'll be gone like a shot. He can't be <laughs> about a fibre. Grant. Yeah, Craig has Craig has done brilliantly as well. But you know, I think there's a serious discussion for ITV to be had now that if the show were to go, what did they replace it with? But they need to build the viewers back up. I think they need to regain trust. Yeah. And the shadow of Philip Schofield and everything that happened there casts a very very long shadow on it. Yeah, certainly does. Yeah. And. Uh, Thank and you so much for that, for bringing us up to date on that story. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers. I wonder will she be back for dancing in January? I don't know. There we go. At this stage, we shall wait I think. And see.
her being safe is the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, I know it fair, is. Isn't yeah. it? Uh, so um, that is Holly Willoughby. Uh, still to come this morning. We'll be on this morning after us, by the way, so you'll see who's there. But later on, we've got Minister for Education, Norma Foley, joining us in studio at about quarter past eight. So if you have any questions for her, you can WhatsApp us now. Now, 0896 111 We'll see you back here very shortly. Welcome back to Ireland AM. We're here shouting about copy books, workbooks, iPads, school books. Let's have a look at what's coming up the rest of the show, because, Tommy. Because uh, very shortly we are going to be joined by the Minister of Education, Norma Foley, to hear about the promise of additional teachers and SNAs mm -hmm. into your schools and also free books up to the junior cycle yep. as well so, and lots lots more so uh, get in touch 0896 one. We'll also be dissecting budget 2024 with Fine Gael's junior minister in the Department of Finance Jennifer Carol McNeil at 8.45. Plus we're going to discuss the latest developments in Israel with the Tanishta Michal Martin that's coming up at 20 past nine. Whew. Yeah busy 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 show. Alan what are you doing? <laughs> are We're you going to, to do a total shift of gear as well this morning. <laughs> it's not all about budget because we've got a family feed for a fiver in the kitchen coming up later on. And we're going to be chatting to 80s pop icon Tony Hadley. Gold. Gold. What, what did we discover yesterday? Bo. Bo. Always so believe in your glory. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, your glory. Oh, it's your rugby talking. glory, Tommy. They used to sing a Tommy Bo song yeah. to to ah, go. They didn't, weren't they? were the good old days. <laughs> we're here in Ireland, you don't sing anything for me anymore. <laughs> we don't, no, we don't take you seriously at all, Tommy. <laughs> but now let's go up to the Virgin Media News. So here's Anne O'Donnell. Thanks, Alan. Good morning. Well, motorists are going to be facing a rise in the price for petrol and diesel today of up to three cents a litre after a carbon tax increase was announced in yesterday's budget. However, an increase in fuel excise due at the end of the month has been postponed until next year. Well, from today, smokers will also be paying more for a packet of 20 cigarettes, which went up by 75 cents. And it comes as a number of measures in budget 2024 to address the cost of living crisis are being welcomed. But the opposition says not enough has been done. A little for a lot of people, Budget 2024 delivered solid benefits for most sectors of society. Mortgage interest relief, a cut to the USE and energy credits to help with winter bills, all welcomed. But the problems with housing and homelessness are still hitting home. And there's nothing in the budget today that's really going to see us turn the corner or turn the tide on the number of people entering homelessness. There is you know, a welcome increase in the, the funding for homeless services on the front line, but that's also a recognition that the numbers are going to continue to go up. The extension of hot school meals and free school books are set to make a difference to families. But while one-off payments are beneficial, commentators say they don't give ongoing stability for those struggling. They do help families um, in the short term, but really they're not going to the core problem that we have, and that is um, too many families that are uh, living in poverty or living at, in, at risk of poverty. Mental health reform has seen a surge in demand for services. It's worried that the amount of extra funding for the sector was not outlined in the budget. We've been calling for an investment of an additional investment of 115 million euro and as we await more details I, I suppose we're concerned that we may not get the amount that, that is needed. The government has said there's something for everyone in budget 2024 but critics are warning the interventions don't go far enough for the poorest in society. Trish Laverty, Virgin Media News. More attacks have been reported in southern Israel and on the Gaza Strip as the conflict between Israel and Hamas militants intensifies. Well, the, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said its siege of Gaza is only getting started. But aid groups are warning of a humanitarian crisis as a result of the military offensive. The US President Joe Biden, meanwhile, has pledged his support for Israel. We're surging additional military assistance, including ammunition and interceptors, to replenish Iron Dome. We're going to make sure that Israel does not run out of these critical assets to defend its cities and its citizens. My administration 
has consulted closely with Congress throughout this crisis. And when Congress returns, we're going to ask them to take urgent action to fund the national security requirements of our critical partners. This is not about party or politics. This is about the security of our world. Garthi in County Cork are continuing to question a man in connection with the murder of Tina Satchwell. She disappeared from her home in Yall in March of 2017. Well, a man in his 50s was arrested in East Cork for questioning yesterday. Well, the disappearance of Tina Satchwell in 2017 sparked a massive investigation and led detectives to many parts of the world seeking information as to her whereabouts. She was last seen in the company of her husband at a car boot sale and vanished the following day. Now, Richard Satchwell has always said that he believes his wife is alive and that she would return someday. Now, also, Gardaí conducted many, many searches, including almost 30 acres of woodland at Castle Martyr. Nothing of any evidential value was discovered. Divers also conducted a search of water close to the house where Tina once shared with her husband. In the last couple of weeks, Gardaí have been reviewing the case and it was upgraded to murder, despite the fact that Tina Satchwell's body has not been located. Yesterday afternoon at about five o'clock, a man in his 50s was arrested and taken here to Cove Garda station. Once his period of questioning expires, at that stage, detectives must either charge or release him. Elsewhere, flights at the UK's Luton Airport near London are suspended until at least midday today after a large fire broke out at a terminal car park yesterday. Well, the fire was at a multi-storey car park just off Terminal 2 with reports that the airport has said that it was a car fire which had spread. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Well, sure, it's a pretty wet start here along the banks of the Royal Canal and out there this morning in terms of weather, in fact, plenty of heavy rain now hitting parts of Cork, Kerry into South Tip, Waterford, Wexford now stretching up into South County Wicklow and parts of Kilkenny with some thunder and lightning strikes out there this morning. So please do take extra care. There's light to locally moderate northerly winds. Now right across today, in fact, uh, plenty of showers across the southern half of the island. The best of the brightness, as you can see there, uh, into parts of the north through the northwest and a lot fresher, a lot cooler out there today. Top temps around 12 to 17 degrees. Into tonight, uh, conditions drying up. Good, long, dry, clear spells for most areas. Cloud cover down south and then across central parts, we will see a taste of a grass frost and quite a chilly night in store too as temperatures dip back to about 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up for now. We're back again live at 8.35. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. It's time now to take a look at this morning's paper, starting with the Irish Times. It's headline, Households Gain from Tax Cuts, More Spending and Welfare Boosts. The government yesterday unveiled a huge spend and save budget that boosted permanent spending and promised large cash giveaways in the coming months. The Examiner leads with giveaways and tax breaks in 6.4 billion euro budget. Budget 2024 has targeted the squeezed middle and energy, with energy credits, investment in childcare and income tax reductions. However, the opposition criticised the coalition for not making housing a priority. The Irish Independent also leads with that story. Its headline reads, 14 billion to win working family votes. The coalition parties are banking on a giveaway budget to win back voters in next year's election. The higgledy piggledy tax cuts do add up, but they will be forgotten about a, in a day. That's the top story in the Daily Mail. Uh, the Mirror moves on to a different story today. Murder probe with Gardaí dig at missing Tina home. Gardaí last night arrested a man in his 50s and sealed off the home of Tina Satchwell amid suspicions her body may be buried there after she went missing in 2017. Yeah, the Sun similarly leads with Tina murder cop quiz. Tina went missing from her home in Yall, County Cork in March 2017. The Star also leads with that story. Murder quiz as Gardaí dig at Tina's home. The Herald goes with Sleb asked if I was sweet 16. An Irish entertainer appeared in criminal court accused of engaging in sex acts with an underage girl. She told a jury that she thought it was over when she came clean about being 16.
Now coming up, you have been sending in your questions and we're going to put them to the Minister for Education, Norma Foley, when she joins us in studio to discuss the education budget. Don't go anywhere. Hi everybody, welcome back. We continue with the topic of Budget 2024 this morning as we turn our attention to the Department of Education. Fianna Fáil Minister for Education, Norma Foley, joins us to discuss some of the outcomes from, bud from budget yesterday, uh, yesterday for pupils and teachers and parents. You are very welcome to the show Thank this you. morning, Minister. Thank you so much. One thing that caught an awful lot of people's attention was in relation mm. to secondary schools. And this was uh, providing funding to extend the free school book scheme to junior cycle students. So, of course, you had done that in primary schools. But there's a lot of people getting in contact this morning, like Sarah, on the school book allowance for the junior cycle secondary school students. Will this cover tablets? Lots of schools don't even use the books anymore because it seems a bit mad. You've got the tablets, you've got the books, but you need the code to use the tablets for the right thing. And environmentally, it seems bad. What's going on with that situation? Yeah, um, thank you very much for having me this morning. I'm delighted to be here and have the opportunity to chat with you about the budget. Could I just say at the outset, I'm very conscious of what's happening, you know, the other side of the world. And I know it's leading the news as well again this morning and just of the course, yeah. horrific trauma that's been inflicted on, on families and um, older people, children, yeah. um, men and women. It, it, it is nothing short of horrific. And I think all of us, I think, in whatever capacity we're working today and in the next number of days, we want to send our solidarity mm -hmm. and we're really, really calling and asking for a cessation of violence on both sides and really asking people to consider the humanity. And we'll be talking to the to say, that about that in the next that, And I just wanted to yeah. say that at the outset. In terms of the school books, I want to say you're quite correct. Um, this is this year we're seeing for the very first time in a landmark move, we're seeing free primary school books and resources uh, for, for children at primary school. And so the next step, was to ensure that we could bring that into post-primary. So we will, for the first time now, ensure that there are free books and also classroom resources. So that means... But you have to buy the tablet. Yeah, no, uh, if, I, if I could just finish. So there will be free books and classroom resources. So that will be the textbooks and it will also be the dictionaries, the calculators, so on and so forth. We know all of our schools utilise books. That's, that's a given. Some of our schools absolutely do utilise the tablets. Uh, it's not, we're not in a position to do absolutely everything. So we have begun with the books. Uh, and I think that's an important, like that's a, you know, for, for parents who are sitting at home today, and I know there's lots of mums and dads watching the programme, I can now say to them, when you look at this budget in terms of your families, if you have children that are uh, attending childcare, there's a 50% reduction there in costs. If they're going to primary school, there's free books. If they're going to post-primary school, there are, as we've said now, the free books yeah. and classroom resources. And I can also say there's an extension of the hot school meals. I can say that there has been all, if you have children taking exams, the fees for taking exams have been waived. Yes. So it's not possible to do everything, but I think mum and dad need to know this is what is being done. It's been a cumulative step one after another. And, you know, and, we and have listen, I think the feedback from a lot of parents has been very positive in that, yeah, that indeed. the school books is a, a welcome step forward. Yeah. Some of our question, why not go all the way? But that's maybe Again, for I'd next year. To, now, yeah, you have, it is the question of resources. And, we've and taken we, we, we will get to that. Primary, um, you've also, junior cycle. Uh, committed to 744 teaching posts, mm -hmm. 1,200 SNL posts. Mm -hmm. We have a message for Louise going, where the hell are you going to get them from? Like, where are they come from? And then, I mean, this is the other thing, because we discuss this a lot. We talk mm -hmm. about schools and teachers a lot here. Yeah. Teachers are leaving in their droves. They yeah. can't afford to live in this country, particularly a lot of them are in part-time roles. And yeah. I, even Fola said, like, will these positions, so these 744 teaching positions, these 1,200 SNA posts, mm -hmm. will they be full-time positions? Because it's not possible to survive on part-time positions here, particularly well, in cities. Well, again, just to say to you, and, and it is factually correct to say that we've never had as many teachers in the system, nor indeed SNAs in the system. So, for example, but in terms I will, of... But our class sizes sure are going through the roof. We need well, the teachers. Well, again, just in relation to the class sizes, uh, three budgets... But even though, sorry, just start with the teachers. Where are we going to get them yeah, from? So if I, uh, yeah, so just to give everything in its widest context, we've never had as many teachers and SNAs in the system, and you've specifically referenced special education and what we're going to do there. For the first 
last time ever we have more than 42,000 professionals working in the, in the area of special education. We will, at the end of this year, have almost 3,000 uh, special education classes. We've 130 special schools. Know, but and again, just in terms it? of the teachers, just to be clear as to how we're, we're supporting teachers, um, there are a number of measures in the, um, uh, in, in the budget. Uh, one of them is around the area of um, upskilling, where the department provides free of charge uh, upskilling for, for uh, teachers. I attended UL. Oh, sorry, if, no, if I could Minister, just finish now. Just this additional is... posts. These are Indeed. additional posts. Yes. You're talking about upskilling. We're not talking about that. We're talking about yeah. where are these new teachers going to come and, from? And I'm going to tell you. Um, so last year we had three and a half thousand uh, additional teachers come into the system in terms of newly qualified teachers, uh, in terms of supports for teachers, because you have referenced that teachers are choosing to leave. That's actually not true in many respects, insofar as having the largest contingent of teachers that we've ever had. But we have we've also, also got an increased population, the largest uh, in, population in, we have, in, we indeed, have had but since so the famine. For example, if you want to look at, uh, for example, special ed, we have... Um, seven new um, um, special schools in the last three years. And that was the first time in 20 years we've had new special schools. But just in terms of the teachers and keeping them in the system, and I recognise one of the greatest challenges for the, for the teachers is actually the cost of courses like the postgraduate in teaching, OK? So I'm introducing for the first time a €2,000 support, yeah. uh, which uh, the student teachers will receive, the PME students will receive on completion of PME. Now, that's never before been done. It's been done now. And as I've said, we are um, providing for upskilling that. courses. I for still don't are understand where these teachers are coming. Because where? a number are going oh, on career breaks as well. So an awful lot of the teachers that are coming into the system are filling these career breaks. So they're not getting full-time permanent positions. And they're going, well, I'm going to well, go away now. Again, again, to be fully accurate in that, where there are full-time permanent positions, um, they're being provided for. Um, and we, we do have a pathway in terms of uh, permanency in our schools where after um, the first two years, once they begin their third year, there is a permanent contract. And then in other instances, there may well be a permanent contract available immediately. So there is a very clear pathway in terms of permanency. We do have a sufficiency of teachers coming out. Um, I will absolutely accept that there are more challenges in some areas than in others in terms of costs for, for uh, young teachers starting out, particularly maybe in our cities. So we're looking, as I said, for the first time ever in terms of our PMEs, giving them support to the tune of €2,000 on completion of the PMEs. Me. Um, because it, just on that as well, like Ireland primary schools, the highest rate in Eurozones <clears throat> in terms of class to pupil ratio. So you're talking about the highest rate of, of teachers we've ever had. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. And the what? fact that you're upscaling is great, but at the same time, we still don't have enough teachers in the system. And every principal we speak to says we can't fill the posts. And again, just to say to you in terms of the class sizes, uh, over every budget for the last three budgets, I have reduced the pupil-teacher ratio. So, so what does it's that still mean? still the highest in the but, Eurozone. No, but can I, no, can I just say, what does that actually mean? That means for every 23 pupils in the system, there is one teacher. In our DESH schools, in, in some of our DESH schools, that means for every 17 pupils, there is one teacher. And in our special education uh, classes, where there are six pupils, there will be one teacher and there will be two SNAs. But what about and the I teachers? Say, what about the SNAs that are taken about and the special needs teachers that yes. are taken out of those classes to fill mainstream class roles because there is no subs available to do that when a teacher is out or a teacher is on career break? Because it does feel like an awful lot of the schools that we talk about are robbing Peter to pay Paul themselves to try to cover the amount of teachers that are needed in but the But again, just to say to you, we have at this point more than 22,000 SNAs in the system. We've never had that before. And I absolutely accept that we need more and more and more. Yeah. And we have grown them every single year. Last year, for the first time ever, it surpassed the 20,000 mark. Um, and we will continue to grow that. And we will continue to grow, as I said, the, the teachers that we have. Like, for example, and like you've made reference to the fact that, you know, teachers are leaving. I think it's interesting to note, even in terms of the CAO, we have seen almost a 14% increase in those who are applying for teaching. So because teaching it's a, it's remains... it's a transferable skill all over well, the well, world. I'm just saying teaching... But, but it is a transferable yeah. skill all over the world that people can go, right, you know what? I can head off and do a few grinds over in Australia and I'll make more than I can here. I can head off, I can go to Dubai, go tax-free so that I will be able to buy a house because they cannot afford to get houses here in this country or get mortgages but, on some of the salaries that we're but giving. But again, can I say to you, the challenges that we might face in some areas are not unique to the education sector. We're seeing them in other sectors as well. And in terms of, you've referenced housing here, and, you know, significant efforts are being made around housing. We have, and it is correct to say at this point, 
more than 400 first-time buyers a week are buying their first we're, home. We're getting away we from, we're getting away from no, education. No, but you just referenced can that housing just, is, is an I, issue. So I'm saying can I just yeah. five, ask billion, you five billion a year is now being put into housing supports and housing developments. Uh, so again, you know, it's, we do it's see that. tackling what the issues. What percentage of the GDP is spent on education? Well, we have the third highest budget in across all departments, which is 10.5 billion euros. Actually, Euro. Ireland is in the bottom third of all Eurozone, Eurozone countries, according to the OECD. On We're in the last place of 36 countries. On the money that is spent in the education. So this goes down to the education of the government relying on parents and contributions Voluntary. on principals having to do whatever they can on, p on teachers to try and provide this high level. So, I mean, for a country that is awash with money at the moment, to think that we're one of the lowest that puts that money into education, that's quite well, a Well, just on, on, ju uh, just on that point, uh, Tommy, like there are other experts who would view a different management for that or a different view of that, but notwithstanding that... Well, it is in 3%, terms of, isn't but, uh, it? It's no, 3% of the GDP. But I'm just saying, in terms of the money that's available to us across all departments, we are the third highest spending department at 10.5 billion euro. I just want to acknowledge that. But, I mean, and in that, terms of the pressures that have been put on schools in terms of spending... But that's putting money on the parents. And we're hearing all the time about voluntary contributions that are paying for teachers. Well, We've the National Prin Principals Forum say they don't think they'll be able to run through winter. They won't be able and to keep their schools I'm heaters. very pleased that you've, you've raised that point because I can actually say to you that in the budget, we have made an additional allocation of €81 million Euro for schools. And if I could just explain how that works, because I think your viewers would be interested. For every child that's in a school, there is a capitation or there's a yep. support grant paid. So we have secured now an €81 million addition to what they would normally get. And that means 21 million of it is a permanent measure. Is which that is on the top schools... of the 90 million last year or is that down from 90 million last the year? The 90 million last year was a once-off. So it's um, down. It's 81 if, this year. Could, again, if I could explain. The 90 million last year was a once-off. The circumstances last year were very different to this year. Inflation was running at almost 10%. It's at 5% now. Energy costs were higher than they are this year. But notwithstanding, they are still higher than what they were pre-COVID. So we are introducing an additional 81 million in terms of capitation. 21% of it is actually um, is, is a permanent measure and uh, so schools will have that going forward. And so, for example, a child presently, that's bringing up the capitation at primary from 200 euro, so to 200 euro plus 49 euro. And it's bringing up the capitation at post-primary uh, from 345 um, with an additional 85 euro. So this is a significant uplift up for our schools. And if mm. there is an issue with schools, we do have a financial service support within the department. We'd be asking schools to, you know, uh, deal directly with the department. There is no compulsion on a parent to pay a voluntary contribution. Well, that, that is voluntary, but of course, uh, we're not getting Again, that. Voluntary uh, and listen, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you on all of this. Lots okay. of issues discussed there. 0896 111 111. Uh, Minister Norma Foley, thank you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much, thank you so much Minister. Thank you. It's time now to get over to Anne in the newsroom. Thanks, Tommy. Well, from today, motors will be facing a rise in prices for petrol and diesel of up to three cents a litre after a carbon tax increase was announced in yesterday's budget. Smokers will also be paying more for a packet of 20 cigarettes, which went up by 75 cents today. A missing investigation into the whereabouts of Tina Satchwell has been upgraded to a murder investigation. She disappeared from her home in Yall in March of 2017. A man in his 50s was arrested yesterday for questioning. And more attacks have been reported in southern Israel and on the Gaza Strip as the conflict between Israel and Hamas militants intensifies. The Israeli Prime Minister has said its siege of Gaza is only getting started. <laughs> You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Well, Ger, we're 8.31 on the button live from the banks of the Royal Canal. It's a very wet start across eastern and southern regions. Take a look at the map out there this morning. It's a very heavy rain now through parts of Munster in across the southeast. So if you're making a break for it for work or if you're heading out and about on the school run, stay nice and dry. Keep the rain gear handy. Now, right across today, it is that north-south split across the island. Good deal of cloud cover across southern regions. But once again, some passing chairs. The odd rumble of thunder 
and lightning can't be ruled out either. Further north we go, that's where we're going to see the best of the brightness, the best of the sunshine through north northwest. Top values of 13 to 17, and then into tonight, long dry clear spells for most areas, with the exception of parts of Munster once again, with some passing showers. A taster of a grass frost too in across central regions, with temperatures on the slide back to 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now. It's wet out there, so stay dry. We'll be back again live at 9. <laughs> You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Thanks for staying with us. Now, from Leinster House to your home, we're looking at how yesterday's budget announcement impacts your bank balance. And here to talk us through is Marion Ryan from taxback.com. Good morning to you, Marion. We're going to try and break this down for people at home in case they they're, didn't get enough information <laughs> yesterday. So we're going to start with a family of four. So we have uh, two working parents over 30 on a variable mortgage that has increased, say, about, about, about 3,000 a year. What are they getting? So your average couple two working parents at a family, what are they getting from so yesterday's budget? They were the real target of yeah. yesterday's budget. They're the middle income earners, they're the parents, they're the ones that are really struggling there. So they're going to benefit from a lot of the stuff. First thing they're going to benefit from is going to be, it's going to be kind of about two and a half thousand euros all in all with all the bits put together. So the increase in the standard rate cutoff point, that's going to benefit them. The different tax credits there, they may be eligible for the home carers tax credit that was increased up there. And all of that stuff is going to help them. And as well, you mentioned that the mortgage there, so the introduction of the mortgage interest relief, that's going to help them as well. So they'll be able to claim a tax relief on the difference of the their mortgage interest payment in 2023 on how much more it was than in 2022 and they get 20% tax relief So on the that. widening of the tax bans, the USC cut, yeah. the, the, wide, the, the tax or the mortgage interest relief. Can you just explain, because I think people are a bit not quite sure about this mortgage interest. So, so you've got to get your, your rate for 2022, match it to your rate that it's gone up in 2023 and the amount that it's gone up you get a percentage of that. Is that yeah, it? so we, we might be overcomplicating it on ourselves a little bit. So the easiest thing to do is once the year is up, you're going to get a mortgage interest statement from your provider. Yeah. You, you do every year. You take that, you look at the amount of mortgage interest that you paid in 2023, get your one from 2022, you see the difference, and then that's what you claim your 20% back on. So I suppose the headline piece yesterday was €1,250 and everyone with a mortgage, that. that's the cap at it. So in order to actually get cap out of that and get that €1,250, your mortgage payment, your mortgage interest payment has to be over €6,250 more in 2023 and than it was 2022. you have to be paying over a certain amount for your mortgage as well. Yeah, so your mortgage at the end of 2022, it had to be above €80,000 and below €500,000. So that's going to leave a bit of a sour taste to a lot of so people. So if, if you're paying over 500000 you don't get anything and under 80000 you yeah, don't get anything Yeah, exactly. Either. So again, they're trying to target the middle people there and they're really trying to target these people that may have seen 10 increases in their mortgage interest rate in the last 12, 18 months there. So they're the real kind of targets of this one. Okay, so, and it is capped at 1,250. So you're, yeah. like everybody yesterday went, oh, I'm going to get 1,250. You're not. You know, but you I You mightn't. I had a look there last night. I think on, on average, a lot of people's mortgage interest payment went up by between 118, 300 euros a month last yeah. year there. So they will get a sizable chunk out of it there, but they might not get the, the full 1,250. Okay, now a lot of people, a lot of single people, single renters, and we get this on the programme all the time, we were even getting it yesterday, going, we're always the ones who are forgotten about, and it looks like single renters. So say we have a single renter under 30, an average income of 40,000 a year, and like so many of them around the country at the moment, looking at this now going, what did I get? Yeah. Very little. They were the first people into my inbox yesterday going, what about me? Really and truly, the only thing they're benefiting from yesterday is the little bit that they played on the tax credits there. So the POIE tax credit and your employee tax credit, they went up 100 euros and the little bit on the USC there. So they get about 140, 140 160 euros back of the USC because they don't even cap out on it there. Yeah. The change in the standard rate band makes no difference to them. They're below it anyway there. So they're, they're feeling kind of left out and it's always kind of the case because so suppose they're seeing a couple of hundred quid is all they've got out of this. To couple three four hundred euros if they're renting another two hundred and fifty out of the so the rent but tax the credit. renting then the tax credit for the rent has gone up to seven hundred and fifty can you explain this tax credit and a lot of people we be on, uh, getting onto us onto the show going they didn't even bother to apply for the tax credit it is so complicated 
It's not, and I'm blue in the face <laughs> from trying, well, to, trying to get people. It's they do. They think it is, and I suppose there's a few things. There's always going to be the fear factor. Talking and to your landlord, the, phoning your landlord. Yes. Because what do you need to get from your landlord? So your landlord, so your landlord has to be registered with the the RTB. So you need to get their RTB registration number. So that's the first hurdle for people because they have to have a conversation with the landlord. Nobody wants to talk to their landlord because it'd be great, Alan. Yeah, here's your, here's my local property tax registration number. By the way, while I have you there, we're going to have to increase. Yeah. The rent something. So people are fearful of that. And then I suppose there's I suppose a cohort of landlords out there that might not be registered with the RTB. The, and they don't want it. to get into that conversation. Yeah, and they don't want all. to have a conversation with their landlords about it. Then there's a lot of it just simply, and I hate to say it, us being Irish, laziness, that we don't we don't do it because even if you're in a rent a room scheme, so if you're renting a room off a friend, so your friend has managed to get onto the property allowed it, they've got a spare room, they don't have to pay any tax on the rent that you're receiving there, you're still eligible to get your tax credit there. So we were a bit disappointed that it was only up to 750 it mm. went. We were really hoping that there'd be a doubling on it, that it'd be something really tangible for people there, but like, anything we get, we're, yeah. we're happy with. And um, we just want to go to a retired couple because we were getting lots of texts in during the week about that. So a retired couple receiving the state pension of around 13,800 a year. How have they benefited from yesterday? Yeah, so I suppose the first immediate jump in their income from yesterday was the 12 euros that went on a week onto their, their pension payments there. So that's really going to benefit them there. For them combined, it's going to be about 12, 1300 euros in the year. The USC isn't applicable to your no. state pension, so that's not going to make any changes to them. They're going to be under the thresholds for paying any tax on the tax side of things. But what will benefit them, I suppose, is going to be things like the fuel allowance there and all and the, the allowances, payments and the double things. payment. Yeah. They're getting a double payment in Christmas, the Christmas bonus, as it's commonly known as. Mm -hmm. And then again, in January, they're going to get another payment. And then I suppose we can't forget as well the energy credits. It's not yeah, taxation, so the three, but like going, they're going to yeah. apply to everyone. So we're going to get yeah. three 150 energy credits. And like like the last time, nobody has to apply for them. It just comes comes off your bill. It, automatically from your energy provider. We had hoped, again, we always hoped, we always hoped that there'd be 200 again like there were last year. But what kind of surprised me is we had anticipated two. And they said and three. three, so we'll take what we'll take what we get. And there's two before Christmas. Uh, I or think I believe it's one before Christmas and two, and two in spring. Then in the yeah. spring. Okay, so lots to get through there. Thank you very much, Marion Ryan, Business Development Director of Taxback.com. Thank Thanks, you very Alan. much for joining us. Now, uh, after the break, we're going to be chatting to Junior Finance Minister Jennifer Carroll McNeil. See you back here in a few minutes. Back to Ireland AM now as the Minister of State at the Department of Finance. Our next guest was closer than most to Budget 2024. She has it all here mm, with her. We're going to get all the details. <laughs> so yeah, let's dig into those details now. It's Fine Gael TD and Junior Minister Jennifer Carol McNeil. Good morning, Good morning. to you. Um, Listen, it's the front of a lot of the papers this morning. One for everybody in the audience. Mm. Uh, giveaways, tax breaks. But then if you look at it, all the recommendations I saw from every economist was don't do it, you risk overheating the economy. In a time of already high inflation, it looks like it's going down, and the Irish Fiscal Advisory Council have said, don't do it, don't risk it. But you have done it, the government has done it. Why? So we've done two things that we have like the Fiscal Advisory Council suggested that we create a new fund, for example, to future-proof our finances for the future. And that actually was the biggest announcement yesterday, this Future Ireland Fund, that we're going to put 4 billion in initially, but then 0.8% of GDP over the next number of years. Which the is point of that, because you have the, the money there. You have yeah, the money but to the do point it. of but it why, is, is to try to create a fund of 100 billion euro by 2035. And that doesn't matter today, but what it means is in 2035, we can spend off the top of that, that the government has the discretion to do that. That brings us into the territory of places like Norway, where we have our own sovereign wealth fund. It doesn't matter today, but I tell you, the people sitting here 20 years from now are going to be the beneficiaries of that. And it's a hugely important thing that happened yesterday but the that is IFAC for today recommended. As well. That's right. And so I, we have to straddle this pressure as well. The economists, I, I respect everything that they say, and we, you know, we, we stay within the parameters, but we also have to provide supports in a reasonable way to people at a time of considerable pressure. And so we try to do that in a way that doesn't create extra inflation. So, for example, last year we faced similar questions quite reasonable questions inflation last year was eight percent and notwithstanding the supports that we brought into the economy which you know is a risky thing to do inflation came down to five five percent this year 
And notwithstanding these supports, we still anticipate that inflation will get to 2% next year. Now, this is an extraordinary time of inflation and it's very, very difficult. And I suppose from a government perspective and from a legitimacy perspective, looking after people, you have to try to help people through this period, but also not create too many inflationary pressures. And that's why most of our supports are very targeted. They're targeted at people at the much more vulnerable end of the scale and targeted at people who are, who are working and under considerable pressure. And that's why that tax package is there. That's why that double child benefit is there, the energy credits, because we recognise that it is a difficult but period. Do you think they're targeted? For, because for an awful lot of people who are doing quite well in life and you've got the mortgage interest relief, you have got, there will be by September 2024, 50% decrease in childcare costs where there's issues within certain childcare services about people not being paid uh, properly uh, in relation to that and someone's making money somewhere. That that perhaps this isn't means tested well enough. That it is one for everyone in the audience and not everyone in the audience needs yeah, something. But, but it isn't though, it isn't. I mean like, and you know, there's another example, like the childcare cost is something that has been too expensive and we want to structurally reduce that permanently and that's why those changes are there. But if you look at the payments that are being made to people, they're overwhelmingly focused on people who are getting fuel allowance, they're people on ex who are getting carers benefit and we're even extending the means threshold to try to bring more people into that for the second time in a couple of years. So they, the only credits where their universality is the energy credits where there's a double child benefit for people with children up to 18, of course. But everything else is weighted in terms of working family payment. Like these are, that is a group of people who really, really need extra supports. And the other sorts of supports that I know Norma Foley was talking about around free books and that, all of these things add up to try to reduce structural costs and give a little extra money without banking it into the books in, you know, for, forever and ever. So trying to straddle it in, in slightly different ways. You've so been very vocal over. about yeah, housing and saying yeah. we need it. Why have we not seen more housing and an increase in the social housing we built this year? There, there hasn't been, it's just housing for all. It's well, yes, so a couple of years ago, we were criticised for not having a multi-annual plan, that we were doing this on a year-on-year -year basis. So we published Housing for All, which is a multi-annual plan, and we have set out in advance what the figures are going to be. We have to be, we, we know what the capacity, we know how many people are working in construction. Construction unemployment is 2%, it's, it's practically nothing. So we could try and, we could extend the targets, but not in a realistic way, not in a way that's going to be met. We know that we have the, the budget, the funding, the plan there, and we produce this multi-annual plan. plan. Not, we're not hitting that plan. We have, reduced, the we have reduced it, uh, which is to do to the lack of people that we have working in the sector and being able to actually deliver that. So there's no point in saying we'll double the budget on that without being able to deliver it. There has to be a measure of realism in it. But if you were to put money it. at it, then there would actually but hit But that's not the things. so. You still have to have, for example, you still have to have enough engineers in the state. You were talking about the pressure and on teachers. And there's full employment in relation we have to full employment the, con on the construction and sector. And but it, yeah. it is going to change in relation to the fact that all these plans we had for office buildings are not going to happen and people aren't, there's going to be a big issue with that and whether they should be converted into homes but let's talk about when it does come to housing something mm -hmm. that you do talk about uh, that we never tackle vulture funds in relation to how they're allowed to buy in this country really like there's buy to let there's buy to let all over the place people who want to get on the property ladder and they can't you can have vulture funds going into housing estates and go to you know I'm just gonna buy a bunch of houses inside there there is a cap on what that they can buy but it feels kind of hopeless that we're just going to, for an awful lot of people, they're like, I'm just going to have to rent in this in this country well, forever. Well, you know, um, I understand why you're saying that, but if I look at the facts and I look at the number of first-time buyers that are getting not just mortgages but homes, in the, the, the mortgage figures for July, there was 700 first-time buyers getting mortgages a week. Now, there's 400 first-time buyers buying homes a week. Now, that's every week. That's 400. And that's not individuals. That's individuals or couples. So the activity is absolutely there. So it, that, it can can't be that it's that hopeless when we see that activity. I do not underestimate how difficult it is. I do not underestimate the affordability challenge, but yet it is still happening. And we have the Help to Buy scheme, which 40,000 people people or couples have yeah. benefited from, which is your tax back. Now, there's other parties that want to abolish that. I think it's madness. We want to try and create supply. We want to try and make sure that we meet the affordability challenge. We have a shared equity scheme for people to try to balance out yeah. the portion where you can't get the extra, you know, you can't get the full mortgage. Think to try to provide. Driving prices, though? Do you think it's always a risk. It's always a risk. Prices? And that's why it was focused on new homes rather than existing Green. homes. So, you know, and then people will say to me, well, why can't it be for a secondhand home? And I totally understand that too. But 
But again, you're trying to do things that are going to generate supply rather than try to be demand side pressures all the time. And that is not an easy thing. And you're trying to help people through this difficult process all the time. We have a huge amount of messages in about carers, very concerned yes. about yesterday's budget, the 12 euro increase in disability carers allowance. Even a one looking at Michael here, a recently retired, having paid PRSI and PAYE for 47 years, all I get is 12 euro increase in my pension. What difference is that going to make to me? Well, and they feel that they're the people that are missing out. Let me address carers first and then pensions, if I may. The carers mm -hmm. is, is a we've made two really significant changes over the last two, three years with Heather Humphreys, which is that we extended the eligibility for carers, for people who have been caring for a loved one, but not getting anything from the state. So two years ago, Heather increased that from 332 euros just on a weekly income. That's way up now, uh, th that, that, that's gone up to 450 and beyond, and up yeah. to 450 now. We also increased, increased what's called the savings disregard. So she did it two years ago and she's done it again. The point of that is to bring more people into carers so they're either getting a full carers allowance mm. or half carers and I would encourage anybody who maybe have applied in the past and didn't get it to apply yeah. again because the because the thresholds have changed so much and yes I mean I, I appreciate what you're saying on the pensioners side and you have 12 euros increase but you also have the lump sum for fuel allowance for you know the fuel allowance we brought in most people over 70 for example yeah, last there are year costs, that. there is lots of costs there's a lot of different supports but that is yeah. targeted at that, that same group there. so it's not just about a 12 week it's mm. also about the living alone allowance the fuel allowance the different Lump yeah. sums, the extra pension, um, it, not just before Christmas, but in January too. So it's not just one thing, and it's it's a it's, it's a combined measure. And I'd ask people, anybody who's having difficulty navigating it, email me, and we'll try and set it out because I appreciate it's it's hard. Yeah, they're really they're. Well, I've, <laughs> got a, I've got an easier one. <laughs> Minister yeah. of State at the Department of Finance. Someday maybe Minister at the Department of Finance. Uh, Jennifer Carroll McNeil, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Thank taking you. time this Thank morning. You. A lot more to come on Ireland AM. Back in a minute. Welcome back. There's still lots more to come on this post-budget breakdown episode of Ireland AM. We're just going to go... Holly's going to... We'll just keep on going through to this morning. Going until 12. Uh, coming up next at uh, 20 past nine, we're going to speak to the Tánaiste, Michal Martin, about uh, budget 2024. Plus, something completely different. He is... Gold. Gold! Thank you! <laughs> Someone was going to say it. Defining voice of the 80s and former Spandau Ballet frontman Tony Hadley will be checking in. That is going to be interesting. Gold! Uh, Alan is in the kitchen and uh, what have we got, Al? Gina doesn't know who Tony Hadley is. I never said that. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to lie to me. <laughs> Gina's in the kitchen this morning because with the budget and all, we have a cheap and cheerful dinner. What have you got for us? So today I have a creamy sausage pasta on a budget. Um, it's got lots of veg, it's got lots of protein and lots of pasta. Slow and cheap. Cheap. So you're talking about just under five euro to feed four to five people. 45? <laughs> yeah, 45. a banquet. That's very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> there I you feed go, the neighbours. We'll feeding all the neighbours. No, 45 people Four for a fiver. Two five. Those sausages are gone. <laughs> well, I tell you. OK, let's go up to the Virgin Media News Hub now. Here's Anne O'Donnell. Thanks, Alan. Good morning. Well, motorists are going to face a rise in prices for petrol and diesel this morning of up to three cents a litre after a carbon tax increase was announced in the budget yesterday. And it comes as a number of measures in budget 2024 are being welcomed. However, the opposition says not enough has been done. A little for a lot of people, Budget 2024 delivered solid benefits for most sectors of society. Mortgage interest relief, a cut to the USE and energy credits to help with winter bills, all welcomed. But the problems with housing and homelessness are still hitting home. And there's nothing in the budget today that's really going to see us turn the corner or turn the tide on the number of people entering homelessness. There is you know, a welcome increase in the, the funding for homeless services on the front line, but that's also a recognition that the numbers are going to continue to go up. The extension of hot school meals and free school books are set to make a difference to families, but while one-off payments are beneficial, commentators say they don't give ongoing stability for those struggling. 
they do help families um, in the short term, but really they're not going to the core problem that we have, and that is um, too many families that are uh, living in poverty or living at, in, at risk of poverty. Mental health reform has seen a surge in demand for services. It's worried that the amount of extra funding for the sector was not outlined in the budget. The government has said there's something for everyone in budget 2024, but critics are warning the interventions don't go far enough for the poorest in society. Trish Laverty, Virgin Media News. Well, free junior cycle, school books and an additional 744 teaching posts for special educational needs were announced in the budget, along with 1,200 SNA posts as well. The Minister for Education, Norma Foley, spoke to Ireland AM earlier on the couch and she was asked to address how that they are planning to fill those posts as schools already are struggling to fill current vac vacancies. We do have a pathway in terms of uh, permanency in our schools where after um, the first two years, once they begin their third year, there is a permanent contract. And then in other instances, there may well be a permanent contract available immediately. So there is a very clear pathway in terms of permanency. We do have a sufficiency of teachers coming out. Um, I will absolutely accept that there are more challenges in some areas than in others in terms of costs for, for uh, young teachers starting out, particularly maybe in our cities. So we're looking, as I said, for the first time ever in terms of of our PMEs, giving them support to the tune of €2,000 on completion of the PME. Well, in County Cork are continuing to question a man in connection with the murder of Tina Satchwell this morning after she disappeared back in March of 2017. A man was arrested for questioning yesterday. Well, the disappearance of Tina Satchwell in 2017 sparked a massive investigation and led detectives to many parts of the world seeking information as to her whereabouts. She was last seen in the company of her husband at a car boot sale and vanished the following day. Now, Richard Satchwell has always said that he believes his wife is alive and that she would return some day. Now, also, Gardaí conducted many, many searches, including almost 30 acres of woodland at Castle Martyr. Nothing of any evidential value was discovered. Divers also also conducted a search of water close to the house where Tina once shared with her husband. In the last couple of weeks, Gardaí have been reviewing the case and it was upgraded to murder, despite the fact that Tina Satchwell's body has not been located. Yesterday afternoon at about five o'clock, a man in his 50s was arrested and taken here to Cove Garda station. Once his period of questioning expires, at that stage, detectives must either charge or release him. University Hospital Limerick is appealing to the public to consider all care options this morning before presenting at the emergency department today. Well, the hospital says it's currently managing high demand for emergency and inpatient care with surge capacity now in operation at the facility. The hospital is also warning that anyone who comes to the emergency department and doesn't have a life-threatening or a severe illness or injury will be facing a significant wait time. <laughs> You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Thank you very much, Sure, We're getting past 9 o'clock here together. It's a pretty wet start along the banks of the Royal Canal here this morning. And still now, as we age away through your breakfast time, plenty of heavy rain now hitting parts of the south through the southeast. In fact, uh, we're looking at some heavy rain uh, through Cork Kerry, once again south tip into parts of Waterford. Wexford stretching up there, up around parts of South County Wicklow and into Kilkenny Carlow, not escaping either. So stay nice and dry if you're in those neck of the woods. Elsewhere, we are seeing uh, some thunder and lightning strikes hit as well in those moderate, uh, light to locally moderate northerly winds. Now, right across today, it really is that north south split across the island, plenty of showers across southern regions. The further north we go, in fact, that's where we're going to see the best of the sunshine, the best of those October rays out there today through the northwest as well. Top values of 13 to 17 degrees into tonight. Uh, long, dry, clear spells from most areas. The exception, once again, in parts of the south where it will turn up with some passing shares. Into central regions, we will see a touch of a grass frost that will take us through into your Thursday morning. Quite a chilly night in store too, with values back to around 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now. We'll have more back live, 9.35. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media 1. I was boiling yesterday. Mm -hmm. Manky out there today. Not good. We hope you're doing okay. After the break.
We're going to go on with our budget special because Tanishta Mihal Martin will be with us. Yes, uh, thank you so much for sending so many of yeah. your messages into us, and we will hope to put uh, a number of those to the Tanishta. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Ireland AM Now All Morning. We have been analysing Budget 2024 and the impact it will have for all of us in the coming year. So joining us now to continue that conversation is Tánister and leader of Fianna Fáil, Michal Martin. Good morning to you, Tánister. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Uh, listen, the budget was yesterday. There is, of course, talk of potentially a general election on the cards in 2025. According to the polls, Sinn Féin currently well out in front at the minute. Do you think was that a big consideration whenever we see in the front of the papers everything is about tax breaks, uh, giveaways, uh, one for everybody in the audience? No, um, there was, it was not an electoral consideration because there will be uh, another budget um, 12 months' time um, before any general election in, in, in 2025. So our focus really was on enabling people to come through what has been a significant cost of living uh, pressure over the last two years on people. Uh, and in addition to that, then, to take new initiatives as well, as our population increases and as our population ages, uh, we've also taken steps to provide for the future for young people today, for 20-year-olds today and 30-year-olds today, in terms of the next 10 years, that we would have funds put aside into a savings fund that will earn money, that will pay for services into the future as we age, but also then that we would provide funding for ongoing capital investment in infrastructure and in light rail and buses, uh, in things like the metro, in housing um, and so forth. And, and that is interesting. You're talking about future-proofing climate and three billion budget uh, for that. But we always see these top subjects normally in a budget about health, and housing. And they just seem to have been shoved to the side. And one thing that uh, the Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, promised that it was going to be a budget for children. And Focus Ireland has said that the government has failed to deliver its promised children's budget with nearly 4,000 children who are homeless. That they are entirely forgotten is what, home, uh, is what Focus Ireland says. What's your response to that? Uh, but that's not true. I mean, there's five billion in capital being spent on housing. Um, this year we would have a record number of social houses built in 2024, over 9,000, up to 9,600. We will provide 11,000 overall when you take 1,000 from leasing and 1,000 from acquisition. But we'll actually build 9,000, uh, over 9,000 social houses, uh, which is a record uh, in decades in terms of house, house construction. And then about 6,400 directly assisted affordable houses by the state. And if you take the first home scheme, if you take uh, the help to buy scheme, which we've now said will also continue right into 2025, if you think of the grants that are available in terms of vacant houses or derelict houses, uh, there's an enormous suite of schemes and funding available to increase housing input output because we yeah. need to build up more houses. Last year we built over 30,000. This year we will reach our targets again. But we need to go beyond that. And money and capital will not be a challenge to us in terms of housing. The challenge is more on the delivery side to get through planning more quickly, uh, to get through the various stages of projects, to get more modern methods of construction into play so that we can get more houses built more quickly. I mean, you said there, Asher, that's not true. I mean, yesterday, I'll be honest with you, it frustrated me a little bit seeing the coalition almost slapping each other on the back. Congratulations, because, of course, we do have money. But the Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, said that he wants Ireland to be the best country in Europe to be a child. And we spoke there, Mwern, about the 4,000 children that do not have a a roof over their, over their heads at the moment. We also speak about the CAM situation. We had a psychotherapist on yesterday who declared the mental health situation and the availability of mental health to young children as like a third world country. There's 4,000 children on a waiting list for just a one-off appointment. And then, of course, we were speaking last week, we had uh, people on about their children needing uh, spina bifida and uh, spinal surgery, yep. that they're in a race against time and they might have to wait for five years to get this. So when you're saying oh, it's not true, like, I mean, there's 8,000 children, over 8,000 children there who will not be slapping themselves on the back, who will not be delighted about what's been offered yesterday. 
Well, Tommy, what I said wasn't true was that housing was sidelined in the budget. That's not true. And it just isn't good enough to sort of say, make sort of uh, superficial and shallow comments about very serious but, issues. But what I did say and there... I'll just, I just make that point on housing. No, 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 hold on. No, Tommy, I didn't... Tommy, I, I didn't interrupt you. OK. And I would appreciate the opportunity to, to, to give my perspective on it. Uh, and on the housing front, over the last three years, there's been a dramatic change in house construction and in house delivery. Uh, and that is objectively there in the metrics in terms of the number of houses built. Now, in terms of Ireland being a third world country, don't take my word for it. Look at the UN Quality of Life Index and look at most international indexes in relation to Ireland. We need perspective on this. Ireland is not a third world country in respect of the services that we provide. Uh, we do have huge challenges. Of that, I've, I'm in no doubt. And in terms of the health service, yes. And in terms of uh, spina bifida and scoliosis, the issue will not be resources in that regard. Again, as we've seen we recently, it's about delivery of uh, services and the utilisation of that funding uh, in an effective way and in a safe way and in a quality environment. And there is... Uh, an inquiry underway in relation to yeah, I, but, particular sorry, aspects of that service, Constant, and as we know. And also, you know, over 20, 20 million was allocated to that service last year. And we do need to find from Children Health Ireland as to how that money was used to deliver. There has been an increase in the surgeries. The number of surgeries that were, uh, took place has been an increase. But the waiting lists have gone up. And the Minister has asked, you know, what is the correlation between the money allocated and the number of sorry, surgeries and getting the waiting Thomas, list down. So we're not focused on that issue here. and we remain focused I on it. I am trying not to jump in here, but I, okay. I do have yeah. to say that like, we have messages, a lot of messages in and certainly a lot of them are on cams. And Mary just said, like, the cams, it's broken. Like, what investment has been put into that? Because we haven't really heard much about it. There has been significant investment put into cams over the last number of years. The biggest issue is not financial Again, it's not the financial allocation, it's recruitment of psychiatrists. Particular parts of the country uh, have found difficulty in recruiting psychiatrists. We had that in the South Kerry area. But in other areas, they have recruited the necessary number of psychiatrists. And that has been the greatest hindrance to the development of CAMS. But on the broader level of mental health for children, we have invested, particularly in non-governmental organisations and projects like the Jigsaw and so forth, and then in education and the wellbeing programme in schools, because there's a broader issue around mental health in terms of prevention, in terms of nurturing good, positive mental wellbeing. And we are investing in our schools to that end and also investing in uh, organisations within the community that can assist young people to cope with undoubted mental health pressures, and particularly post-COVID, that has been the case. But I do acknowledge and I accept your point in respect of the challenges around CAM and the particular model that has developed in terms of psychiatric-led model. That has been challenging in terms of recruitment and retention of multidisciplinary mm. teams. But there has been expansion of the service over the last three years, uh, and certainly over the last decade. There's been a huge change in terms of provision of CAMs, mm. but it's not where it needs to be. No. And it's not just a resource question. Yeah. It's not just a resource question. It needs, to, in terms of organisation and recruitment, they're big issues. Yeah, something that has been brought up uh, time and time again. And, of course, um, mental health will also lead on, lead on to our health service. And we currently have what has been described as the worst ever overspend, a budget of 22.5 billion for our health service. There's a core uh, expenditure there of just 800 million this year. That's kind of seen as, you know, running to stand still. We have a huge number of doctors and nurses leaving our service, taking their skills somewhere else. And we know every single year, it's like the trolley crisis gets worse and worse. It's like we're trying to hit these numbers of people in trolleys. It gets worse every year. What are we doing to stop that, to get to the core of what is wrong in our health system? Because we're going to have strep A. We've already had the that it's already been mentioned about that. Flu crisis, COVID hasn't gone away. Are we just going to have higher people in trolleys again coming in the next few weeks? Well, Miriam, we've actually recruited 22,000 people into the health service in the last two years. So rather than you saying thousands are leaving, thousands have come into the health service. Like, we do need balance and perspective in the narrative. And that's not taking away from the huge pressures that are on the health service. But 22,000 extra people have come in over the last two and a half years that is the case. And in terms of our health service more generally, health outcomes have improved in Ireland uh, very significantly compared to, uh, say, a decade ago or compared to even five years ago in terms of cardiac health outcomes. Uh, and we now top the EU league table in terms of um, lifespan. Now, that didn't happen by accident. There's other factors. Uh, so we can't 
sort of create the context that it's a, uh, somehow a third world health service. It has expanded, it has grown. You've mentioned yourself, fair, in fairness, that it's a 22 billion investment now. Um, and we have a huge overspend for this year. And I think it's going to continue to grow because our population is growing mm. and we're living longer and ageing, which is going to create more pressures. And in terms of we've, we've come through COVID, but there will be a, incre a number, increased number and, and frequency of viruses like strep A uh, and so forth and other challenges for children, in particular with RSV, which we had over the last two years. So vaccination, prevention mm. in that respect is, is, is very important in terms of the broader issue of you know, the flu uh, and COVID. But yes, there will, there will be pressures. Um, if you look at the United Kingdom and so on, they're in, 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 in even a more difficult position than we are. But that's not something that we take any solace, solace from. No, uh, We have to continue to work to improve, not just emergency, by the way, but I think the key issue is the quality of health care. The key issue is outcomes, uh, that we improve our cancer outcomes, our cardiac outcomes, our stroke outcomes, which we have been doing. Um, successfully over the last number of years, and listen, but which as, rarely gets acknowledged. As you say, listen, there has been no shortage of investment. The, money, the question is, a lot of the time, where does that money go and how effective is it? I do have to ask you, uh, Tanishta, as well. Listen, you are the Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're seeing the war between Hamas and Israel at the minute. You were one of the first European ministers to visit Israel back in 2010. The Gaza Strip, yeah. The Gaza Strip. I, like, do you feel what you saw back then, that this escalation was inevitable? Um, I, for, first of all, I have to say that the, the, the savagery of <clears throat> what happened last Saturday um, has shocked me in terms of the random and indiscriminate killings of innocent Israeli citizens and most, as we heard yesterday, babies uh, horrifically killed uh, in family homes. And I didn't see the extent of that coming. Um, and I think it represents a, a pan-Islamic jihadist approach um, by Hamas, which must be condemned. In terms of... And, and then I think we, we... While I would accept that Israel has a right to self-defence and have a right to deal with Hamas, there cannot be collective punishment of the Gazan population. And... Uh, Anything that is done must be done in accordance with international um, law uh, and also that humanitarian aid mm. and support has to get to Gazans and has to get to Palestinians. And that's why at yesterday's European Union meeting, uh, I was very clear on Ireland's behalf that there should be no disruption in uh, development aid or in humanitarian aid from the European Union uh, to Palestinians, either in Gaza or in the West Bank or indeed in the refugee camps in Jordan and elsewhere, and that we will work with the United Nations uh, to try and help the people of Gaza, uh, the ordinary civilians there who are now reaping um, the impact um, of the war between uh, Israeli armed forces and Hamas. Uh, it, it really is depressing. When I was there recently, we, did, we, were, we were very conscious that the situation was deteriorating rapidly mm. uh, and we were quite depressed coming out of the region because we could see no future in terms of the political process or in terms of moving to a two-state solution. Uh, but I must say, what happened on Saturday, I think, took mm. the yeah. scale of it over. I think we're looking at 1,200 Israelis killed now. Um, and now we're looking at 850 to 900 yeah. Gazans killed. Uh, and the real, the real worry is, uh, I think we need to de-escalate because this could implode across the region into Lebanon mm. um, and the West Bank yeah. uh, with further untold misery on the people of the region. Um, and Tanishta, can I ask you in relation to that? Obviously... You've just said there how that this could have an effect and it can spread its wings. And of course, we've got the war in Ukraine and what's going on there. And that doesn't look like it's going to be over any time soon. I know that the EU are preparing for this to go on for nine years. So I'm just wondering in relation to that, all of these do have effects on every country across Europe. And Brexit has had knock-on effects. And nationalism does appear to be coming back in a way that we haven't seen in Europe in quite a long time because of course there are refugees from these crises. Do you worry about what's happening in Ireland and how we're dealing about this rise in anti-immigrant sentiments? I do, uh, I do worry about it. And um, as Minister for Foreign Affairs and indeed Defence, I'm very conscious of the growth in conflict all over the world and indeed climate change impacts. And uh, these conflicts, these wars are fueling migration uh, without question, Russia 
and, and Putin have weaponized migration. That is why they're terrorizing the civilian population, bombing infrastructure, bombing residential areas. They're actually hoping that millions will f f and have succeeded in causing that migration from Ukraine. <clears throat> we see the same in Sahel and in, in, in Africa in terms of uh, the coup d'etats, the jihadists coming to a greater superiority in the regions there. Uh, and so many, many young people want to leave those locations for a better life. And <clears throat> that has implications um, for countries all over Europe. And we're witnessing that in terms of the growth of the far right. And we have to be very conscious in Ireland that we don't facilitate the growth of the far right here in, in terms of their um, terrible views in, in, and their mm. approach to dehumanising people um, who are fleeing situations mm. uh, where there's immense danger uh, and, 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 and poverty. That and and, and um, it, it's very worrying. I think I do worry about where the world is right now. Yeah. And the Middle East is the latest manifestation of it. But it, it, it feels like there's a view in Ireland, certainly with the Gardaí, to not engage in an <coughs> awful lot of things that are happening. I do think one of the most worrying things was seeing your faces with gallows on them outside the doll by, by certain groups. So do you think it's best to just kind of keep a hands-off approach and hopefully that all this will fix itself? Or do we have to go, right, this is, we can't tolerate this? I think the, there, there has to be a firm response to any attempts to inhibit freedom of movement of people on our streets. Uh, that's a very fundamental right in a democracy, irrespective of whether you're a politician or not. Many media people are feeling pressure as well, as you, as you know, um, and there's this kind of pressure that if you don't report in my direction, you know, in some, uh, I see a lot of increased attacks on media outlets online uh, for, uh, by groups who feel or our view isn't being, you know, representative. And that's very worrying in a democracy. So, yes, there has to be a firm response. And I think particularly in terms of how we manage protests, um, in, in, in terms of making sure that they, people are not allowed to disrupt uh, the normal toing and froing of a democracy, yeah. where people yeah. should be allowed to walk the streets of our towns and our cities without freedom of harassment, being yeah. shouted at, uh, or intimidating groups encircling people. Uh, that is wrong. Um, well, and, I'm um, sure this is something uh, that, and that, that, that's something that I would be very concerned about. You know, I'm sure something that your government will be trying to tackle as well. Um, listen, Thomas to me, Hall Martin. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us this morning uh, live from government buildings. I have to get you on the sofa next. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. No, he won't get a word in with you. He'd be like, no, Tommy, <laughs> stop, stop talking. Um, listen. Well done, everybody. Thank you for that. We're going to have some food coming up. We're going to be singing uh, Spando Ballet at Tommy Bow as well in just a little while. But right now, it's time for the news with Anne O'Donnell. Thanks. We're in time for a check-in now on your latest news headlines. And from today, motorists are going to be facing a rise in prices for petrol and diesel of up to three cents a litre after a carbon tax increase was announced in yesterday's budget. However, an increase in fuel excise due at the end of the month has been postponed until next year. Smokers are also going to be paying more for a packet of 20 cigarettes, which went up by 70 cents, 75 cents rather, today. A missing investigation into the whereabouts of Tina Satchwell has been upgraded to a murder investigation. She disappeared from her home in Yall in March of 2017. A man in his 50s has been arrested for questioning. More attacks have been reported in southern Israel and on the Gaza Strip as the conflict between Israel and the Hamas militants intensifies. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said its siege of Gaza is only getting started. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Thank you very much, Joe. We've had a pretty wet morning here along the banks of the Royal Canal this Wednesday. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, in fact, we're heading off to County Ross Common because we're paying a visit to Lockheed Forest Park just outside Boyle. So that's all to come live from Ross Common, the Rossies, tomorrow morning live from 7. Now, a final look at weather, and it's a pretty wet start here elsewhere. Plenty of heavy rain. We've been dealing with it all morning now. Bit of a washout through parts of the south and across the southeast, through parts of southern Leinster as well, with the thunder and lightning strikes out there this morning now, light to moderate northerly winds in the driving seat. Right across the north-south split across the island, the best of the sunshine. Take a look at the map through parts of Ulster 
up around the northwest. Fresher and cooler out there today too, 13 to 17. And into tonight, long dry clear spells for most years. Touch of a grass frost into central regions with cloudy conditions and some passing showers down south with overnight lows. Chillier and fresher, a lot cooler too, back to 3 to 7 degrees. So for me and Avro on cameras, uh, that is your final weather update now this wet Wednesday morning. You need to be chilled to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates in Virgin Media One. Perfect coffee every time. Tassimo sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. Yeah. I know. Now, all this budget talk has got us hungry this morning. Or has. Gina Daly is here to make us some creamy sausage pasta for a fiver. Gee, wow. A fiver. fiver. To fiver. Wow. 45 people, we were saying earlier. <laughs> on, you'd it. Four to five people yes, for my, a fiver. Yes, four to five. Now, I don't have a Mary Poppins pan. I know, um, yeah. Yeah, so this is a nice budget-friendly dish. Now, obviously, when you're going to the supermarket, shop your offers, use your vouchers. Oh, I if, do. If your um, supermarket has an app, use all the things. And I got this for about four euro ninety something. So my oh. hero product, the most expensive, was the sausages. And were they own brand sausages, and you don't mind doing that? Yeah. Oh no, because I know for a fact that these sausages are made from a really nice company. Yeah. So I know that. And they just put their own brand on. Exactly. It. Yeah. So what I started with was sausages. There was eight of these. There were jumbo ones. Took the skin off, made them into little meatballs. Oh, now I yeah. had them already cooked here, so you you would just cook them off in the pan. Yeah. Now people might think, oh, that's an awful lot of work to take all the skin off and everything. Ooh. No, what you, you can cook them in. Kind of like, slice it, and it's quite easy, isn't it? Or you can do them full and then slice them up afterwards. But you get more of the flavour from the sausage. And the great thing about this is you don't have to season the meat because they're sausages, they're already seasoned, they've got lots of flavour in them. So it's a nice, cheap way of... OK. I have to say, Gina, it's absolutely delicious. It's here. delicious. I'm Good, I'm glad you like it. Um, and what we're going to do, so for the sauce, it's simply just... Uh, stock and cream but first we're going to put some vegetables in because obviously we want to have some veg in our, our dish and if you have fussy eaters at home like I do I finely slice so this is a leek and um, oh, you right. can put two leeks in this you can put as much this is a nice base kind of dish that you can build on flavours you can put is in do you are there leeks in this now the there's one that leeks we've got. in that wow. you wouldn't even know I wouldn't even know, know that wow that's brilliant um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a bit of garlic powder which is a, a, such a budget friendly yeah. way of adding flavour oh, you yeah. always have it in the press and it, you get so many dishes out of one jar it's about 50 cents for, for it I have loads of those little I know they're all dried but yeah. like, I and they what... last years I found ones in my press from like 2017 and like they're <laughs> grand no it wasn't grand you didn't use it <laughs> they're in that yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be dead tomorrow that's where the flavour comes from <laughs> okay so what I'm going to do now is uh, put in some stock so the stock is going to bulk up your, your sauce. Um, I put in about 200 mils there. Then I'm going to put in some double cream. So oh. this is an indulgence. You don't have to. You can use light cream or you can use Philadelphia or something Some, like yeah, that. Creme fresh or something and maybe yeah. it work. Now, I like double cream because uh, it doesn't split when you're cooking, especially on a high heat. Yeah. And it does give a nice, rich flavour. But you can kind of... Do you know what, Gina? It does, because that pasta is just delicious with it. Yeah. Um, and this is the type of dish that you can do on the pan or I have a, a, a nice fancy air fryer um, at home. I tell you, I'm very impressed with your cooking in the jacket. I mean... Th I'm you know, not sweating at all. <laughs> like, like, that's got splashed cream all over your jacket. Oh, what, you, what are you doing to do here? So, again, oh, I have fussy eaters at home. They don't like the texture of broccoli. So what you I do is... get it into it. So I right? want to get oh, my veg in, so I use Tommy. a really fine grater um, and just I'm grate it all in. the broccoli in. Now, don't get rid of your stalks. Stalks. You can eat them, you can put them in soups, you can put them in anything, so no waste with this. Now, obviously, if I had more time, I'd get that all in, oh, but right. that's giving you the I've nice flavour. I've never seen that before. That's a great idea, just great it's great it for like kids. That. You're getting the broccoli into it. Exactly. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to bring this to a boil. Mm -hmm. You're also going to put in some Parmesan, which is going to give it a nice salty kind and of that taste. just kind of simmer down for, what, maybe five, ten minutes? You give it about five so. minutes, and it goes to a nice thick sauce. Yeah. And um, the Parmesan, then, is going to thicken it up again. 
and then what you're going to do is so you're you just going to... you add your pasta to the pan. See, a lot of people don't do this. You they don't just put have the pasta to... on the plate, but it, it is nicer to put it in the pan because it, then it, it gets into it absorbs all, absorbs all the sauces. It absorbs all the sauce, yeah. makes everything really nice and my pasta's a bit. And it hides the veg a bit more. Exactly, and, and the kids are like, once they see pasta and they hear sausages, they're like, give it to me, they Can't don't care. Yeah. Um, so you're going to mix it all in, then you're going to serve it up. Like there so. There it is there. Just leave it there because we have a shot of it over the um, camera there. You can add a few herbs and spices to a bit more parmesan. And, um, yeah. So that's all quite... It's basically just a one-pan wonder. Oh, well, it's, well, except for the pasta then. Except for the pasta. So it's two-pan wonder. Two-pan wonder. <laughs> it's one of those dishes when the kids are starving or they're like, Mammy, I want sausages, but you don't want to just give them sausages and chips. You want a bit of goodness in it. You want a bit of kind of something in it. And it's good for us as well. Like, I don't want to be making five different dinners. Mm. And, like, obviously you could take that now, put it in, put it in a, a bowl or, or even a, a container this, and freeze it This then. sauce is going to freeze... Yeah. Um, and it's, you can put it into little ice cubes if you have babies and then kind of make smaller dishes out of it. And speaking of babies, if I can just say one thing. Sorry, yeah. no, oh. It's uh, World Down Syndrome Awareness uh, at the moment, okay, yeah. uh, October. And I have a gorgeous little boy at home who oh. has uh, an extra chromosome of awesomeness. His name is Jean. What's his name? Jean? Jean. 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 Say hello to I know he's say. watching and every week he Hi, watches. Hi, Jean. How are just, you? So um, Mammy is making dinner on the telly with sausages, so... Yay! <laughs> I know oh, that he'll, he'll get a great kick out of that, so thank I, you very much. Oh, <laughs> love, I love Do that. Do it again, what is it? Um, so, Mammy... Yeah, Mammy... ...is uh, making... Making... ...dinner... ...dinner... ...on the telly... ...on the, on the telly. telly. With there sausages. You go, <laughs> love it, Jean. Thank you so Gina, much. Thanks, thank you guys. So thank much you very much. And that is delicious. Absolutely. Four euro yeah. ninety to feed four to five people. Absolutely brilliant. Now, yeah. coming up next, we have 80s icon Tony Hadley. We'll see in a few minutes. Perfect coffee every time. Tassimo sponsors Cookery on Ireland AM. Hello, welcome back. Now, here to talk Sinatra. Sinatra? Sinatra. And our ballet and solo endeavours. We have the wonderful Tony Hadley. Now, before we talk to Tony, there he is. Let's take a look. And where it all started. Gold, always believe in your soul. You've got the power to know you're in the stepmo. Always believe it, cause you are gold. Like that you're bound to return. There's something I could have learned. You're in the I'm in my absolute element here, Tony. The uh, Spandau Tony, Ballet. If you'd seen the moves, you'd be like, <laughs> I'm not going on that show. That fella's a weirdo. Uh, uh, seriously, Tony, good morning and welcome to the show. Seriously, it is. Um, I'm <laughs> such a fan of Spandau, ABC, all of that era. And we're looking at gold, uh, true, true the barricade, to cut a long story short. I know them all. I know them all. Come here, was that a great time in music for you and the band? Yeah, first I've got to say, who was that young man on stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a time. I mean, you know, for us as, you know, young kids watching Top of the Pops in the UK, I mean, everybody watched Top of the Pops. Uh, you know, you're watching all your heroes, Queen, David Bowie, Mark Boland, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're on Top of the Pops. So it was a dream come true for five very ordinary young lads from Islington. And we had a top five record, to cut a long story short, on our first single. And, and then the rest is kind of history. And uh, by the time I was 23, we had a number one uh, with True Around the World. So it, it was kind of crazy, but brilliant, yeah. I can't remember a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I want to know all those stories, all please. Those stories, like, I can't yeah. remember. But it's very interesting what's happened very recently with music. It's become something... I was talking to someone in the music industry. It's eraless now because of things like Stranger Things that all these older songs are becoming newer songs and younger generations are taking them on, which you must be really noticing, surely. 
To a certain extent. I mean, I mean, there's things like TikTok and everything. I mean, if, I, if I'm really honest, the whole social media thing, I can't stand. Uh, I, I only ever do nice things, but but it has changed. I mean, like you said, Stranger Things, uh, I think it was, a, it was a big hit for Kate Bush, wasn't it? Um, yeah. There's old songs being used on TikTok as well. So all these old tunes are being resurrected on these modern platforms. And I'm... Yeah, yeah, I, my my big concern. This is my big concern. I say this all the time: is the younger bands, younger singers that are coming up. What chance have they got? It's very very difficult for younger artists to 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 make it be well known and then monetize their music. It's almost impossible these days. Yeah, I think everybody has to do a tour now, don't they? Getting out and speaking of touring, you are touring. You're you're always on the road, and you you're no stranger to Ireland, no stranger to Dublin. And you were here in the summer, or what we could call the summer, at the washout that was forever young. I mean, it was on the news everywhere, radio interviews with everybody. What was it like to be a member, that, to be singing at it, but uh, uh, such a washout? Well, I mean, singing, I mean, the problem is, is that, you know, we expected there were thousands of tickets sold. And then there were only a certain amount of people allowed onto the field because it was just so dangerous yeah. and much. You know, they couldn't put any equipment on. So, I, you know, as I said to early, earlier on, I met so many people that, oh, we've got tickets, we've got tickets, but they won't let us on. And it wasn't the, the organisers. They wanted to do the concert as usual. But Elf, Elf and Safety, and I suppose it was yeah. wet, they just said, look, you know, we, we, we're allowing those people that are on site to come on, which was literally just a few thousand. Yeah. But it was still great. We played our hearts out. All the bands were there. And um, and it was still a great atmosphere, even even despite the rain. But we've had the same over in England as well. It's been awful summer. And do you love that? Do you love all getting together with with all those bands that you must have known years ago? And you do you keep in touch with them? Yeah, we have a. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny enough, uh, this weekend I'm going to Reykjavik. I hope I said that properly. Yeah, First time. Iceland. And I'm going with Midger and uh, Nick Kershaw, who have been. Back for years and years to be honest despite what you used to sort of read in the papers you know the shenanigans between you know the Duranis, the spandau whatever when bands meet up we're all everyone just, oh hi, how are you you know let's have a beer and stuff um you know even meeting like bands like the kaiser chiefs or scout for girls great bunch of lads really fantastic um so yeah musicians tend to sort of like to kind of hug together and stick together and everyone will be able to see you with a bunch of people, no doubt, because it is the, you're going to be at the Guinness Cork Jazz Festival, the 28th of October. It's in Cork City Hall, so you're definitely going to yeah. be playing to a full crowd because no you're rain. covered, Tony. <laughs> You'll be covered. <laughs> You'll be it's, it's go, All right, Cork boy, get that, get that ready. Say Cork boy and they'll love you forever. <laughs> Tony, we have to run. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. We'll see you in Cork. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Cheers. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. So he's going to be there 28th of October in the Cork City Hall. As part of the Cork, the Cork Jazz, Jazz Festival. Festival. What a legend. What a legend. What a day. You are bold. bold. That's what they used to sing at him. You <laughs> are bold. bold. Uh, coming up on tomorrow's show. Cork Heroes, PJ Kirby and Kevin Toomey from the Chart Topping Podcast. I'm Grum Mam will be here. We're tasting some delicious desserts in the kitchen and your top picks from the cinema. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Later. Bye.